Joe Biden was uh, uh, questioned by uh, Fox News' Ducey about three statements he had made, which were particularly egregious, and he claimed they never happened. He, he implied there would be U.S. troops going into Ukraine, that the U.S. would use chemical weapons, and that Joe Biden wanted regime change in Russia. And Biden's like, that never happened. What are you talking about? This is, uh, this is absolutely crazy news cycle, because not only did he deny it, he then doubles down on calling for regime change in Russia. And then when Ducey says, like, what do you mean you'll respond in kind to chemo- chemical weapons? He goes, I'm not telling you. What? And he's like, the people want to know. And he's like, well, I'm not telling them. Just wow. Tremendous response from a president. So, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about that. Plus, uh, Florida has signed, Ron DeSantis has signed into law the Don't Say Straight bill. That's right. The bill in Florida, which prevents teachers from talking to uh, preschoolers, to kinder- uh, third graders about heterosexual marriage. Mm. It really does. Of course, the, the, the media and the left have been framing it as a Don't Say Gay bill, but we'll get into all that stuff. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we have a extra juicy bit of drama tonight. You see, uh, November 2nd, 2020, I released the first song in a series called Will of the People, where you see a a ground shot of the base of a statue moving up with cables thrown over it under an orange sky. And then people pull the rope down while saying this is the will of the people. And something interesting happened. Muse, on my birthday, March 9th, published a video uh, for their album Will of the People and song Will of the People that starts with a ground shot. And then you see a foot come in. And then it shows a, a, a low view up to a statue with cables hanging from it under an orange sky while people are chanting will of the people. And I've gotten a lot of questions about it. And a lot of people are asking me, what does it mean? What did my tweet mean? What's going to be happening? And uh, wow, this is really crazy. This is a crazy story. And I feel like I'm in a very uh, difficult position here. So I'll just give you just a, a brief, a quick mention is uh Most of you who have been following the show know that we've invested a significant sum of money, uh, six figures, into our Will of the People universe. I've mentioned repeatedly we have a sequel. We we actually have several because this is part of a a concept universe following these ideas that we talk about in the show in song form. We've talked about graphic novels, and I shouldn't have to reveal our plans for these characters. We've already storyboarded out two sequels to the the song as part of the series. We've already had plans for... um, We've already discussed uh, uh, film, and so we're, we're, we're very heavily investing in cultural development. So we'll get into all of that, but suffice it to say, this is a serious problem for us. But we'll talk about what it means, and I'll show you guys what it is, because some people have questions about legal issues, and I'll just uh, uh, add one, one last thing to let people understand. We're, we're not some fly-by-night company. We're not just like some, we're in, we're in a six-figure studio. This is a, you know, expensive construction in a multi, uh, in, in a, in a uh, million-dollar property. Like we are a big company in terms of our, our reach and everything. We have a ton of lawyers that handle all of this stuff for us. And it's shocking that we're in this position, but here we are. So that being said, we'll get into all the news. Joining us to uh, talk about all this is Alex Brusowitz. Did I get it right? You got it right. All right, man. I was worried about. I was like, I'm gonna say it wrong. For sure. How do you pronounce your last name? Uh, it's Puawal. 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 Is it French? <laughs> yes. yes. Are you Ukrainian? It's, it's actually Dutch. <laughs> oh, it's Dutch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, thanks for coming, man. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Alex Brusowitz. Uh, I'm a victim of the unconstitutional January 6th Commission witch hunt, and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a real victim, real life victim. Now, I'm a political consultant. I own a company called X Strategies. I know you've had Greg Price on a couple of times and he loves you guys. And uh, I've been a fan of yours for, for a couple of years. So I'm really grateful to be here and thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely, man. we got a lot of uh, fun stuff to talk about. We also have uh, our good friend, Seamus. Ian Cross. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I am Seamus, but I'm filling in for Ian Crossland. Yes. So I'm going to do my best to be an Ian substitute uh, this evening. However, I will let you all know if you're interested in seeing more of my content. I run a YouTube channel called Freedom Tunes, where we upload animated cartoons every Thursday, sometimes on Tuesdays as well. Go check it out. Very cool. Uh, you guys know it is my favorite night of the week. That is Monday night because I enjoy my job very much. Very happy to be here with Alex. Stoked to get into it tonight. Let's go. I know everybody's also like, please don't talk about Chris Rock getting slapped. Oh. But it was staged. No. Maybe. Dang it. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Timothy. Maybe we'll talk about it. Before we get started, my friends, head over to eatrightandfeelwell.com and you can pick up your Keto Elevate C8 MCT oil powder, 51% off. This is medium chain triglyceride keto oil powder. If you are trying to cut the carbs and you want energy, this is what you want to get. I like mixing it in my coffee. It's uh, it's like creamy. It's like it's 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 really really nice. It doesn't uh, it doesn't taste like anything too crazy. It just kind of creams up your coffee. But you could put it in smoothies and put it in anything. And many of you know I've been doing. 
Like I, 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 I was doing keto for a while and then I kind of eased off. I'm just doing like a real low carb thing and this stuff's fantastic. Go to eatrightandfeelwell.com and you get a 60 day money back guarantee. Keto Elevate provides your body only C8, the most ketogenic MCT. That means it provides support for energy levels, healthy appetite management, mental clarity and focus, athletic performance. Keto Elevate's personally my favorite MCT. Free shipping on every order. And for every order today, Biotrust donates a nutritious meal to a hungry child in your honor through their partnership with nokidhungry.org. To date, Biotrust has provided over 5 million meals to hungry kids. Please help Biotrust hit their goal of 6 million meals this year. You will also get free VIP live health and fitness coaching from Biotrust's team of expert nutrition and health coaches for life with every order and their free e-report, the top 14 ketogenic foods with every order. So thank you so much, Biotrust, for sponsoring the show. That's eatrightandfeelwell.com. But don't forget to go to timcast.com and become a member if you would like to support our work directly. As a member, you get access to our exclusive segments from this show, which go up Monday through Thursday at 11 p.m. We'll have one of those members-only episodes for you guys tonight. And we also have a green room episode. These are Fridays, once a week where you get to see us just hanging out downstairs in our green room with our guests. And as you can see, we have Jeremy Boring, co-CEO of The Daily Wire, who was hanging out downstairs. We got pool table, we got movies, video games, and it looks like uh, Seamus is there playing that game. guy? That's the actor who played Ian Crossland on Timcast oh, yeah. when he was That's absent. Right. That's right. <laughs> and I'll also point out in this, I think there's also uh, uh, the video game that Seamus and I are working on. Yeah. That Timcast and Seamus Shem- is... Very uh, excited about it. The, so you might get some... I don't know. I don't know what we're allowed to release about the video game we're working on. Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to keep as much of it under wraps as we can. But I'm pretty pumped for it's it. Cool. We We've been working games. on it for a while. We got video games. We got books. Yeah. The next book from Tales from the Inverted World is coming soon. Yeah. We've got a bunch of music already in the works, and I have it on my phone. We're we're thinking within the next month or two we might have another full music video. So we're 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 cranking all this cultural stuff so we take it seriously. All right. So don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Let's read this first story. From the Daily Mail, Biden stands by his comment that Putin cannot remain in power, but insists he was expressing moral outrage, not policy change. Claims three Russia gaffes didn't happen, what? despite White House having to walk them back. I, I, I got to show you the video, everybody. We need you need to watch this because um, I'm sitting I'm sitting downstairs. I, I'm, I get a message. It's from Cassandra Fairbanks. McDonald and she's like you need to watch this video no no like no laughing and lol or anything it was like watch this and then I watch it and we're just playing it on the counter and then all of a sudden we get to this point where everyone in the room busts out laughing and I'm just like we are screwed come on man. let me let me let me play this clip for you guys and then we'll we'll oh wait let me fix the audio for you but you know it's funny because before the show started I was browsing Twitter I didn't get a chance to do that today. It's very necessary. And I saw your tweet with that Biden video and I was cracking up. I didn't want to interrupt your conversation. There. Oh, I was like, we, we are screwed. Have, yeah, All right, was... let's see if we got it. Hopefully it's loud enough. Are you worried that other leaders in the world are going to start to doubt that America is back if some of these big things that you say on the world stage keep getting walked back? They're not getting walked back. It made it sound like just in the last couple of days, uh, it sounded like you told U.S. troops they were going to Ukraine. It sounded like you said it was possible the U.S. would use a chemical weapon. And it sounded like you were calling for regime change in Russia. And we know... None of the three occurred. None of the three occurred? <laughs> None of the three. <laughs> Mr. President? You, you, you interpret the language that way. I was talking to the troops. We were talking about helping train the troops in that are the, the Ukrainian troops that are in Poland. That's what the context. I sat there with those guys for a couple hours. That's what we talked about. So when you said you're going to see when you're there, you were not intending to I was referring to with meeting with and talking with the uh, Ukrainian troops who were in Poland. And when you said a chemical weapon use by Russia would trigger a response in kind. It will trigger a significant response. What does that mean? I'm not going to tell you. You've got to be silly. What? The world wants to know. The world wants to know a lot of things. I'm not telling them what the response would be. Then, then Russia knows the response. That oh was amazing. Also, I want to say I just love how it starts with this reporter talking to him like he's five years old. It's yeah. like the exact cadence and tone of voice he used to speak to a child with. God bless Peter Ducey. He's been great this you know, entire uh, regime so far. He's going to be really important in the next couple of years too yeah it's it's crazy how the guy from fox news is the only one questioning the president look if if you know when you have a president trump 
you get a journalist who's like, Trump, I got to push back. I want answers. I want some questions answered. I'll be like, you know, we, we should have journalists pushing back no matter what it is. If, if, mm-hmm. if, you know, Trump could come out and give a good answer and a journalist is like, I'm going to push back and I want you to answer these, these concerns. I'm fine with that. But what do we get under Trump? Every single journalist was just always spitting and yelling and complaining and very, very unserious lies, manipulations, chasing false stories. Now we get Biden, arguably one of the worst presidents we've ever had, who said, when you're there, you're going to see people in front of a damn tank refusing to move. It's like, what does that mean? Like troops are going to be there. He said, if Russia uses chemical weapons, we'll respond in kind. Uh, is the U.S. going to use chemical weapons in Ukraine? <laughs> well, remember, Tim, the adults are back in charge. That's what yeah. we heard for four years. We need to get the adults back in charge. And uh, this is the best that they have to offer. I this. think, we, yeah, I think we went too far to the upper limits with the yeah. whole adult yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I saw could have been my, a little younger. One of my favorite Don Jr. posts was he says you're supposed to eat your vegetables, not elect them. Oh, my God. Um, that's and spicy. so that's what we wow. have right here. I mean, he's completely lost it. And. You know, to your point, the media was so, uh, you know, vicious towards Trump and they, and they would lie about him. But now they cover for their lies and they, they'll actually run stories about how Joe Biden didn't actually say what he said. This is what he actually meant. And so it's a total double standard. and It's complete BS. We saw Lindsey Graham call for the assassination yeah. of Vladimir Putin. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, yeah. yo, I call him Lady crazy. G. Uh, mm-hmm. So there was a report a couple of years back about Lindsey Graham, Lady G, about how he had relationships with a bunch of men. And the establishment would say, Alex, you can't call Lindsey Graham Lady G. It's going to be hard for us to recommend senators to work with you. And that's OK. So I doubled down <laughs> on, on Lady G. And so Lindsay, he's is he drunk when he goes on Hannity calling for the assassination? It's the same thing here. And so uh, it's who's running the messaging of this? It's, it's, so I bring him up because now Biden is saying, you know, what, what did he say? Quote, for God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, wow, you want to talk about no peace, mm-hmm. no chance at yeah. any kind of resolution here. You can thank Lindsey Graham and then you can thank the president because, yo, Vladimir Putin's going to be like, okay, there is absolutely no reason to communicate at all with the Americans. Yeah. We know their position. So the you know, I'm, I'm not a military expert by any means, okay? But uh, I've been in a few fights in my life or have seen some fights happening. And I think the number one goal should be to de-escalate, right? Yeah. And the adults in charge currently have no interest in de-escalating. Why? Because the people who fund their campaigns and fund their livelihoods, uh, something called the military industrial complex, they say, no de-escalation. You guys are pushing for war. We're sending in the MiGs. And like I said, nobody knows what the hell a MiG is, but everybody's sending in tweets in all caps send in the MIGs and so I don't want to send in the MIGs I want to send in the peace yeah it's hilarious uh, you know the adults who are in charge completely fail to understand that there is a concrete world that exists outside of their rhetoric and politics doesn't just exist on Twitter or on television and the things they say to foreign leaders or about leaders are actually going to have consequences beyond mm-hmm. their constituents liking them more or throwing red meat to their fan base or the right people disliking them. I mean, calling for the assassination of a foreign leader online while they're invading another country and tensions are as high between us and them as they've ever been. Or for the president of the United States to say that the leader of a nuclear power needs to be removed from his position is so unbelievably out of line and insane and irresponsible. But of course, they're the grownups, right? And we constantly heard about how Trump had mean tweets and Trump wasn't responsible with the things that he said. But you know what? Things were somewhat together at that point. And these people are literally not at all different except trump's policies were actually somewhat effective i I like how trump you know they accused him of working with dictators and i'm just like if if it brought peace it was uh, i can't remember who who, who it was so i don't want to quote the wrong person but he was like you got to understand the reason Putin didn't invade Ukraine under Trump was because Trump was doing his bidding. Right. What the hell does that even mean? It's so stupid. Yeah, and I'm like yeah. pulling our How troops out of sense? Afghanistan, I guess. Pulling our troops out of Syria. Okay, I guess. Like, So what you're saying is Donald Trump was de-escalating war and crushing ISIS. So yeah. Putin was like, all right, I'm a chill. Yeah, so, should he not have done that? I mean, we should, I guess if it makes Putin happy, we shouldn't do it. But this is why it was a perfect <laughs> and beautiful lie. I got it. What is it? If we really want to piss off Putin, then we just need to, to stand back while ISIS comes back. 
Oh my that, that'll show that that Russian. That's true. That's if insane. You're Russian agent. No, so well, I've been doing a lot to to you know support Ukraine. I've banned Moscow meals in my home. Oh, okay, um, okay. I'm not doing white Russians anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I'm just gonna dump out every bottle of vodka I own. Yeah. Um, and if you're not doing stuff to help Ukraine each day, you have to check yourself before you wreck yourself uh, because Ukraine is like my total everything now. Can I ask you something? Um, what's your policy on cats that were bred in Russia competing in cat shows? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to make sure yeah. you really have a sufficiently tough response to their in- aggressiveness. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that should be allowed. You know, okay. we need to take serious yeah. measures. We should ban Russian cats from America. Yeah, Pe- okay. I, I went to a yogurt restaurant, like a frozen yogurt place, and they had a chalkboard when you walked in, and someone drew the Ukrainian flag on it. Mm. And I'm like, the people working here are like 16 years old, and I'm, I, I don't think anything. I, I don't. Need, I don't think any of them know where know where Ukraine no, is. No, they couldn't. They couldn't point it out if there was uh, the letter U and a picture of a crane next yeah, to it exactly. on a map. That's what There's I think. Pointing right to the. Yeah. To I love Ukraine. all the buildings lit up in like blue and yellow, and I wish people paid this much attention to Ukraine in October of 2020 when it was reported that Hunter Biden was getting paid big money by Burisma. <laughs> but uh, now everybody's Ukraine expert, Ukraine stan, Adam Kinzinger's, you know, fawning over oh, Zelensky. Gosh shirtless every day on Twitter. Um, you know, but if, if you came to me and you were like, Joe Biden actually has a gigantic mind control device. And the reason he always seems out of it entirely is because he, he's like Professor X and he's just exhausted himself and he's mind controlling people into believing fake news. I'd be like, well, you know, there's been so many fake stories and people keep believing it. That almost sounds like a plausible explanation. <laughs> Biden's got a mind control device because I don't, I don't, I don't understand how you can have millions of people in this country like one day all of their all their uh, Twitter accounts have blue hats then all their Twitter accounts have syringes then all their Twitter accounts have Ukraine flags yeah and like no matter how many fake stories come out they just like mm, yeah, I'm gonna go along with whatever the, whatever they say or, or like uh, was it Bill Burr when he was talking to Joe and he was like I just turn on the news once every two weeks and do what they tell me to do yeah I'm like man oh boy is that is, someone's got to have mind control powers I swear thinking's hard it's, yeah. it's hard to think. And people have whatever the hell they got going on. They have their fancy football leagues that they got to pay attention to, or they have their Netflix series they really tuned into. Doing the real critical thinking about the important issues, it's hard. They just want to you know listen to the experts, right? And the experts are bought and paid for, unfortunately, by people who don't want to do the right thing. How many how many days do you think it'll be until some, you know, fact checker publishes an article saying Tim Pool claims Joe Biden has mind control powers? Mm. Yeah. Uh, One two, day, two days. days. I can, two, yeah, two I days. can absolutely see it. They'll be like in Tim Pool insanely claims Joe Biden has mind control powers because they don't know what sarcasm or a joke is. Or if they're yeah. really meta yeah. or if they're really meta, they'll release an article saying Tim Pool falsely claims we're going to release an article about him making <laughs> false claims about <laughs> Joe Biden's yeah. mind control powers. You're onto something there, Seamus. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So now, the whole well one thing I wanted to mention here is when we look at the scenario, when we look at the fact that Trump was called a, put, a puppet for Putin every single time he did something that Russia might at the very least appreciate, or which wasn't um, you know, explicitly aggressive towards them, we were told he was a puppet. This is exactly why Russiagate was the perfect lie for the deep state and the industrial military complex to fabricate about a sitting president of the United States because they've been trying to push for war with Russia for years now. Yeah. And all you have to say is, well, the current president is being controlled and anytime he doesn't want to go to war with them, anytime he doesn't want to do anything that would lead to war with them, it's because he's a puppet. It's because he's weak. Do you guys see this tweet? We have this from Gordon Lubold. All right. This guy is a White House national security and Pentagon reporter for The Wall Street Journal. Yeah. He says, Leon Panetta says on CNN that Biden's gaffe in Europe about regime change came about because Biden is Irish. <laughs> And his instinct to internalize human suffering may have overwhelmed him to the point where he was not careful about what he says. <laughs> Biden needs more discipline, Panetta says. What's he talking uh, about? Yeah, it's good thing. Is he <laughs> saying there's some sort of internalized <laughs> Irish thing that exists yeah. within ethnically Irish people that causes uh, them to respond a certain way? Alex, are you Irish? I'm not Irish. Oh, okay. Well, I, I could self-identify, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, exactly. true. that's true. Yeah. All right, well. Uh, I did on uh, the 17th. Yeah, Wait, this is, I'm Ian. assuming this is satirical, though. Uh, oh, I'm not Ian, no. You're sitting right to my I'm going to be Ian today. Seamus, tell me about this deep Irish. Irish uh, internalization of suffering. Wait, I want to be clear. This is a joke, right? No. No? no Come joke. on. No. Are you serious? Oh, my gosh. I would have used this to get out of so much trouble in school. I know, right? I'd have been like, you know what? I'll turn my homework in when uh, Ireland is a free nation, That's not right. being occupied by the British. Is that what they're claiming? Yeah, I, I have no clue. What, what is this? Northern Leon Ireland. Pet, I'm sorry. 
this is this has to be a joke. You're messing with me. I don't know. Is it a joke? Is it for real? I don't know. It this seems... is a Wall Street Journal reporter yeah. tweeting it out. I, I, I agree with you. I'd assume it was You know what? Real. Even if it's not a joke, it's a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a sure. great so statement. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, the spin's amazing. Are we an oppressed group now who gets to use that as, yes. as like an excuse for failure? The Irish have always been oppressed, in my opinion. It's true. Well, no, I mean, Irish people weren't like considered white until being white meant you had to apologize for being white. <laughs> Absolutely. I, so, I'm just frankly, about you know, talk about uh, reparations. You know, buying high and selling low. Yeah. I'm just thinking about how we're going to title this thumbnail, like this clip, <laughs> yes, and it's going to be gonna like go. Seamus outrage response CNN, outrage to racism against CNN us. claims Joe Biden is oppressed because he's Irish. Yes. Or something like that. <laughs> it's going to be good. I don't. I don't. But I don't. I know wrote what, a book called Anglo Fragility. <laughs> and it's about how if you don't think you have Anglo privilege, it's because you've internalized it more deeply than other people. And when I make mistakes and you point that out, it's actually because you are spitting upon the graves of my ancestors right. for I holding just, me accountable. Irish. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, yeah so, I can't believe that. They, that is, it, it would be really great if they use it as an excuse for anything Biden does. <laughs> He's so Irish. Like, Come on. <laughs> sure. This is remember. Well, this is interesting because you remember during the State of the Union on, when I said on. he sounds drunk. Yeah, so, oh, he's say, Irish. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. You brought up a good point about the Russiagate you know, yeah. scenario as well. And and it's important. Lindsey Graham was on CNN shortly after the 2020, uh, 2016 election. And he did an interview talking about how Russia also hacked his emails. And that's why he got 1% of the primary vote. Now, he got 1% of the primary vote because his failed, dangerous policies were, were horrible and widely rejected. Also like and also because he's Lindsey Graham. Nobody likes this guy. And so he's had a personal bone to pick with Putin for a long time. He blames his own failures on, uh, on, on Putin. He should take some self-accountability and seek help. I want to make two points here. Firstly, everyone argues, well, my emails were hacked by a nefarious group who you shouldn't trust. Okay, but those were your emails. Yeah. We're talking about things you actually said. You can't, like Putin did not put those words in your mouth. Yeah. But also, we went from the president is a Russian puppet to the president is an Irish puppet. His internalized <laughs> uh, suffering as an Irishman Irish, has, uh, Irish gate. <laughs> has wow. resulted. Remember when <laughs> someone, someone commented, is this related? To leave the country. Is that not but, also like really, really offensive? That's extremely racist towards. Well, but he is. Those, I, I know, but that's extremely like, oh, well, of course he's going to make mistakes. He's Irish. He's you know Irish. what I mean? Like, of course, of <laughs> course he said competent. something ridiculous and needlessly aggressive that Can he didn't I, need. Of course he picked a fight that he didn't need to get in. He's whenever, Irish. Whenever whenever Biden slurs or stumbles, can we just say he's Irish? <laughs> he's Irish. <laughs> Watch out. Like, itchy, but, he's you, Irish. Know, you know what the implication of that would be? But look, 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 someone replied, is this related somehow to Cuomo's I'm Irish defense? <laughs> no, that was Cuomo's Italian. I'm Italian defense. Yeah. Yeah. When he posted all those videos of him grabbing people and kissing them, and he was like, see, look, it's normal. I do it all the yeah, time. That's what the top <laughs> comment is. An Italian giving advice on self-discipline? Question mark, question mark. Yeah, I like, just want to say, too, this Cuomo. is not a joke. Um, Fox just released an article that says, former Obama defense secretary, President Biden made Putin gaff because he's, quote, Irish. Please, hold on. Can, you, can I read this tweet again? I'm sorry. I'm not off this yet, but I... <laughs> we'll get back to it. Don't worry. Oh, there we go. So we got oh the actual God. article. I mean, this is... What can you expect from him? I know. He's just Irish. Yeah, there you go. Re <laughs> Irish empathy strikes <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing. Uh, new epigenetic trauma is a mainstream smart person concept. Data point just oh dropped. Oh, my. Oh. True that. All right. Um, Joe Biden is in Europe making gaff after gaff, implying that U.S. troops would be in Ukraine. The White House then goes, no, 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 no. Then saying, if Putin uses chemical weapons, we respond in kind. No, 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 no. Then he says, we need regime change. You know what? I'll, I'll take it. And then they're like, CNN then comes out. This time not the White House. Oh, it's because he's Irish and he's internalizing the suffering of the Ukrainian people. He's like, his sweet little Irish feelings were too overwhelming to him. He's not in control but of himself. Is, it, is this like a point? No, no, for real. I have a serious question, though. Is, is Are they making some kind of point about Ukraine I being like Northern Ireland, like the Donbass region is Northern Ireland and Russia is like the UK? You know what I mean? I think they're just calling Irish people stupid. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what's happening here. They're like, look, Joe Biden, Joe Biden doesn't have dementia. He's Irish. That's what's happening right now. Do you understand? Shame is you're trying so hard Irish to victim, be a victim. <laughs> I know. Well, look, this guy is giving me victim points. He's saying that Irish people are more likely to internalize other people's suffering. Yeah. I mean, it makes it sound like very nice. Nice and empathetic. Yeah. I get that, but it's uh, I don't. I don't even a little know. bit offensive. You know. He, oh, uh, by the way, I'm trying to make myself a victim, Tim. Every single time you say something insulting about the Irish people, you you pull the Irish card out and say, "Oh, I'm part Irish too." <laughs> so really, <laughs> Tim, you're being insulted as well. What am I? I think I'm like a third Irish or something. Uh, I'm German, so uh, oh. you know, I'm no empathy German. there. Yeah, yeah, no empathy from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no empathy from me. I am German, Irish, and Korean. 
And there's like a, a and then like a little bit of a bunch of other stuff. Like my, my last name is Dutch, I guess. Quite the but, blend. But uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm wondering if like the Germans and the Irish like team up for something because like German Irish tends to be like I'm a common thing. I mean, we both drink, yeah. Yeah. drinking no, German, beer, German, German beer and Irish drinkers. is actually a pretty common mix. Yeah, yeah what's up with that? Mix. German I, people no, and Irish people were like, yo. I, like I think those were gym. just. I think those were just like the poor immigrants at the turn of the century. Yeah, right? that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. 1900s, late 1800s. It was the the Irish and the Germans, and they hung out and. But no, I, wanna, I think I there's wanna... something. To, I do think there's something to this theory. Do you guys remember Biden's whole like pot of gold gaff? She's like, oh, no. we're going to pay off. Of course, we're going to be able to pay off the national debt. We've got three pots of gold at the other end of the rainbow. His economic plan to follow rainbows yeah. until we could get the gold at the end of them. Do you guys not recall? Is that, is that the Irish Build Back Better plan? Yeah, yes, build back exactly. Oh, God. There was a uh, no, no, no. In all, well, serious, the look of the Irish. in all seriousness, though, there was that one moment where he was chasing after all those little kids. Oh. Yeah. Because uh, that's right. Because he sniffs them. Yeah. He said, they're after yeah. me, Lucky Charms. No, I wasn't going. <laughs> I actually wasn't going for that joke. I was going for the Biden sniffs little kids joke well, really that's not a joke it's a real problem <laughs> real and thing, yeah. that should not be tolerated but is it not I, I'll, I'll leave it alone in a second because I know we've really harped on this but I just gotta say is it that hard to admit the man's experiencing cognitive decline he makes a gaffe because he always makes gaffes and they're like you know what the, the guy's Irish because <laughs> yeah. he's Irish you know it's, so, <laughs> or, or, or is it the <laughs> Leon Panetta's like Biden gaffes and they're just looking in the hat of random defenses of Biden. <laughs> yeah. And there's like one left and says Irish on it. He's like, uh, Biden gaff because he's Wish me luck. Irish. He's Irish. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's important to remember that Obama's former Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, said, quote, Biden's been wrong on every foreign policy decision in his entire career. Whoa. And so there's, there's no excuses for the guy just sucks at his job. He's been in, in office for 50 years and he's been wrong on everything. And so nobody has confidence in his ability to get us through this. I got to push back on that, man. Uh, uh, that is that is unfair. Biden has not been wrong on every foreign, foreign policy decision. He's made uh, incredibly uh, successful decisions as it pertains to foreign policy for his family. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the contract yeah, his brother got. Point. I gotta say, like, like arming point. the Irish the, the Frank, rebels. Frank job, Biden. The <laughs> job, uh, yeah, the jobs that his uh, his kid yeah. got. Uh, Hunter, yeah. I think, I think you're looking in the wrong place. You're right. So we can say that Joe Biden has failed the American people in terms of foreign policy, but the Joe Biden personal family He's foreign family policy man. is quite successful. Yeah, I mean, That's to be true. honest, though, I That's could not, point, I could not believe it when he armed the IRA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really, I thought that was uh, pushed too far. It was, it was very shocking. <laughs> it's funny, but like, I am that, that sounds like something that could be true. Actually, because yeah. he's been in office for so long, like oh, actually in the late '80s, early '90s, <laughs> Biden signed this bill. His state of the like, "Come on, man, we're gonna give, we're gonna give guns, gr guns to the, the IRA, man. Get rid of, get rid of the Brits." That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, I got a brand new shiny helmet and a pair of kinky That's boots, right. man. But I don't even remember the last presidential election where foreign policy wasn't really at the forefront. Yeah. And because of President Trump's success for four years, we had peace all across the board, peace in the Middle East, peace in Korea. Uh, you know, Russia was at bay. China was obviously doing what they, what they do to, you know, unleash the virus onto the world. Uh, but the foreign policy aspect wasn't really a conversation during the 20, uh, 2020 debate when it was at the forefront of the 2016 one about who's going to destroy ISIS. And every, everybody mm -hmm. thought that Trump was going to be the one that actually did it. And he succeeded. Uh, but this is in, foreign policy was a negligent issue in the 2020 debate. And if you could have played that clip of Robert Gates saying that he's been wrong on every foreign policy decision and there's actually foreign policy conflicts, I think that would have had a, a, a you know drastic impact. But we're seeing the genius at work here and, and what happened in Afghanistan, what's happened in Ukraine, China's going to move on Taiwan, it's going to be nasty. And we got this blabbering fool in the office and Hunter Biden's, you know, Yo. securing the bag. They suspended the gas tax <laughs> the in Maryland. So a bunch of people, I've talked to people out here in Maryland and they're like, uh, they're like, no, gas prices went down. Things got better. And I was like, yeah, they suspended yeah. the gas tax. Like gas prices aren't going down. The government yeah. just backed off because they're scared about what's happening. And they went, oh, mm. they're like, yeah, because in West Virginia, it's still over four dollars. Yep. And, and I'm in like, DC. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. but but don't worry. Uh, Biden brought in the TikTokers to That's say right. to make TikToks calling it the Putin gas hike or gas price hike so it's yep. on putin he says mm -hmm. and they all come in like good little sheep and then they you know spit it out to their audiences and uh it's really sad how how quick this misinformation can, can well, spread let me can't let blame me. putin i mean he's he's russian right it's all right my friends you all saw the state of the union i assume because we were here and we were drinking and lauren southern was drunk and she yelled and called biden based because he said we got to secure the border that's true we did. uh so the reason i bring that up in the context of this story about biden's new billionaires tax is that joe biden during the State of the Union says he's a capitalist, secure our borders, build, build, make, make America, you know, build American. Now, 
after that's long passed, he comes out with this far left 20% minimum tax on households worth more than $100 million. This is a Trojan horse. Mark my words. Regular people are going to be like, why do I care? I don't make $100 million. Yeah. Two things. They will lower the threshold like they did with the income tax initially. Always. What, was it, the, initial, the, the initial income tax was like 3% only for the ultra wealthy, right? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they just move it down, move it down, move it down. But this is also Joe Biden desperately pandering to the far left after calling himself a capitalist. He's like, I, I wonder if they're doing a media strategy of, OK, say to the union was this big TV thing that old people watch. Say what the old people want to hear. Now, Internet medium put out a statement that's what the left wants to hear, the progressives. So he's going to tax the rich. They say 20% minimum tax on unrealized gains. So Elon Musk, that, that, this is this is the craziest thing. It's basically like if you buy, uh, check, check, check this out, used cars have gone up in value like crazy because of the chip shortage. Mm-hmm. Let's say this tax was a general tax on everybody, unrealized gains tax. You buy a used car for two grand, but then the chip shortage hits. And now the value of used cars in all government metrics is up 100%. Your $2,000 car is now $4,000. The government goes, you got a $2,000 unrealized gain right there. And you say, well, I don't have any money. I just have my used car. And they say, then you got to sell the car Yep. to pay the tax. You say, but if I sell the car, then I won't be able to work. And they're like, then you're going to be in trouble for not paying your, your taxes. So you sell the car. Guess what? You could only get a couple grand for the car. And they say, now you owe us taxes on the income you got from that two grand. (laughs) And you're like, so I got to pay the tax on the unrealized gain. But then I sold the car and I got to pay taxes on the income. Right now, it's $100 million. But rest assured, you give them the ability to tax unrealized gains. Two things are going to happen. One, they'll lower the threshold. And the second is inflation will push you up further and further to that threshold. Yeah, no, it's true. This is one of the most insane economic policies that he could try to implement right now. First of all, we're not in a place where you can really talk about introducing these like radical new measures to socialize the economy. First of all, we're not really in a healthy place. So to to look at these sort of more social justice, far left pandering uh, options for policy and try to implement them is ridiculous. But also what this effectively does, Tim, you know, you're using the example of a used car. It would force people who are successfully running businesses to the point of making them profitable to sell off their shares. So basically somebody who is moving a company in the direction of making it more profitable is forced to give up control of their company so they can pay the tax on unrealized gains. And what an unrealized gain is, by the way, is money you literally have not made. It's completely theoretical. The government is yeah. taxing something you don't have. Yep. Yeah. And and they could they could theoretically just be like, hey, Seamus, that shirt million bucks Ugh. yeah i mean exactly how do you assess like, the value of yeah. something like that i mean how- hunter Biden's uh, art uh, assessor is going to assess the value of all this stuff <laughs> exactly but, well that's that, that's <laughs> exactly. a big trick too people people don't understand oh, yeah, that you're going to all of a sudden see billionaires being like that rembrandt painting mm, unfortunately nobody wants to buy it anymore because of the tax so it's only worth a thousand dollars i actually but, lost that money can you write off the unrealized losses yeah well i i also i mean i'll give the this regime uh, some credit for recognizing the moment that we're in. Uh, I think now more than ever, there's an appetite on both sides of the political aisle to kind of stick it to some of these uh, billionaires. And uh, on the right, they're sick of the woke billionaires who fund all these, you know, wo- you know these nonprofits, the Arabellums that help fortify elections against us. And so there's an appetite to take it to the to the billionaire class that uh, our people, the Trump base, I mean, we're working class folks. Um, and and so the billionaires don't have the same luster and we don't have the same party anymore. And so there is an appetite there, I think, uh, to get some on the on the more populist right to jump on board with something on this nature. But Tim, you bring up a good point where they're not going to stop there. If we give the government an inch, they're going to take it down to, you know, the, the half a millionaires to the eventually anybody that makes under 100, 100 grand will be impacted by it. Or in 50 years mm-hmm. when inflation is really, really bad. And let's say a dollar is now a dime. So you're spending 10 bucks on a candy bar. You're spending $100, you know, on a couple movie tickets or whatever. They also, you know, lowering the threshold and inflation is going to get you closer and closer to that limit. Well, I think that the billionaires should wake the hell up, though, especially, you know, the, the ones that help fund these woke institutions and the woke organizations to, get, you know, eat their ESG scores higher um, because they're losing the people that, you know, for historically defended them. They're losing. They're pissing off a lot of Republican voters who've always been against the increase of taxes. They've been against the, you know, the punishing the wealthy. But when you're using your wealth to fund organizations that hate our country 
it kind of pisses off some people and they see stuff like that and like, eh, well, right now it's only for the billionaires, so maybe I'll support that. But you know what? I think a lot of the billionaires know that ultimately this tax is going to disproportionately affect wealthy people who aren't lucky enough to be in the exact bracket that billionaires are in and therefore will have a more difficult time avoiding the increased taxes on their net worth. I'm right. sure they'll find all sorts of workarounds and loopholes so that they don't end up having to pay and it will actually make business good more point. difficult for their competition. This, so right. it's probably good for that. For, so, I think it's probably good for them. Take a look at like the progressive tax brackets. What's what's the highest bracket? Is it 250 and up or is it like 500 and up? I need to double check. I think it's someone changed no, it's like I can two, pull this it's, up. Uh, it's like 250 and up. up. Yeah. So imagine this. It's like 37 and a half percent. Imagine you're you're a middle class, you know, working class person and uh you you hit it big somehow. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you're making $400,000 a year, which is a lot of money. You're paying a very high tax rate on that two uh, on everything above 250, which is substantial. It's, you know, what is it, like 40, was it 38 to 40 something percent? Yeah, like 38 and a half. 38. If you're, if you're worth, if you're making $10 million a year as like the CEO of a company and you're paying that percentage, everything after 250 is effectively disposable income for you to invest any way you see fit. Mm -hmm. If you're making 250 to 400, you're like, this is my chance to grow and become a wealthy American, but they're pulling you down. So uh, the simplest way to explain it is, if you only need in the United States right now 150k a year to be considered middle class median, and I'm, and that's because of inflation, it used to be 77,000, then 80, and who knows where it's at now. Yeah. Once you hit that threshold, you're getting a savings, you're building a little bit of wealth, but you're not on track for independent wealth where you can just dump money into a bunch of funds and then make interest and things like that. Mm -hmm. You make 10 million dollars. Who cares? Look, I got my 250 a year to to fund my lifestyle. And then I've got an extra, you know, 9.75 million. Oh, I got to pay 38%. I still got 5 million where I can spend that on any anything I want and generate massive amounts of wealth. As you, as the richer you get, the less that impacts you. So long story short of it is these taxes stop people from becoming wealthy. Now you tell that to the left, you explain it and they say, good. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, you don't understand. It means the billionaires will stay billionaires forever and they'll become oligarchs. And then no one can rise up and displace them and challenge their power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And so another thing that he's failing to take into account here, uh, and of course he is because he's on the left, is a concept known as the Laffer Curve. So I've talked about this on your show before. And there are some less educated lefties who will say the Laffer Curve doesn't exist. It does. Every left-wing economist agrees it exists. The only debate is whether the parabola peaks at a higher tax rate or a lower tax rate. Can you, can you explain the curve? Yeah, sure. So... If you tax at 0%, your revenue will be zero. And if you tax at 100%, your revenue will also be zero because no one's going to work for money that they can't keep. So that means that somewhere between 0% and 100% is the revenue maximizing tax rate, at which point you can reach it. And then if you tax any further, you're actually going to generate less revenue. And so interestingly, federal revenues for the United States have a, as a whole have basically stayed around 20% regardless of what the tax rate has been, which suggests that's probably the largest share of GDP um, that they're uh, able to pull. And when I said 22%, I'm speaking as a share of GDP. So that's probably the largest share of GDP they'll be able to pull out of the economy. So all they're going to be doing with something like this, if it even is uh, effective at getting these people to sell off their wealth, because again, who knows, many of them are going to be able to circumvent it. But, but let's say it has its, you know, quote unquote, intended effect in that way it's probably not going to increase revenue. I would argue that it wouldn't increase revenue because the Trump tax cuts actually led to an increase in revenue. The left continually claims that it didn't. And Biden talks about this, you know, quote unquote, fiscal mess that Trump left him. But that's complete nonsense. Federal revenues increased, but our spending growth out paced the increase in federal revenues. So we ended up with more of a deficit after the Trump tax cuts than we had prior. But that was because of an increase in spending, not a deficit in the amount that we were bringing in. Why don't we just print more print more money, bro? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No, let's just do that. That's worked fantastically right. for us. They're just slapping band aids on band aids. Why don't we start another trillion dollar war, like multi trillion dollar <laughs> war? Let's go. Let's go out get a ground war with Russia, like mm -hmm. Adam Kinzinger and and Lindsey Graham want, and we can get some more money. But um, that seems like the direction things are going. Yeah, uh, true. I think a majority. Uh, what is it? A majority of Americans fear the U.S. will go, get involved in a ground war with Russia. Mm, it's it's terrifying. Especially, yeah. I couldn't think about the the parents who you know have children who are active duty, and they all watch what the hell happened in Afghanistan. And thinking about the degenerates and the morons who are in charge right now, 
are going to be in charge of the military, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the operation on the ground there, there's not a whole lot of confidence in their ability to get the job done. And so praying that we can de-escalate and get peace, but, um, you know, it, it's just let's, a mess. Let's talk about peace here at home. Well, can, like, can I mention one more oh, thing? Yeah, do it, do it. So you discussed, you, you brought up Biden bingo, which we played during the State of the Union address. And I want to mention that that headline starts with Biden whispers that it's not right, which was on the bingo card oh, that right. we had That's for awesome. Biden yeah. State of the Union bingo. He likes to whisper. It's Daily really Mail has thing. some great headlines. Stop right. Headline. Let's 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 talk about peace here at home though. We have the story. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Florida's DeSantis has signed the Parental Rights and Education Bill. Ooh. Hits back at Hollywood critics. Democrats misleadingly attacked Florida legislation as don't say gay bill. I like that the at Fox News subhead accurately points out that they've been lying the whole time about what this bill does. Now, my understanding is the initial inception of it was more so targeting, you know, don't teach about gender identity or whatever. After several amendments, they came to, okay, how about we just say Pre, pre-K, you know, preschool to third grade, we don't want you teaching identity and orientation stuff to children, to these nine to four, year, four to nine year olds. After that, it's fine. Just keep it age appropriate. And for those four year olds, as long as you talk to them in a semi-private setting, totally okay. Did you know that? No, what in, the f- in Florida, this bill that was passed by Republicans will still allow a teacher to go up to a four year old mm-hmm. in a semi-private setting, meaning... If, if, there's, if they're in a classroom and there's a bunch of kids running around ee, and they're playing, a teacher can get up and walk over to a group of kids and say, do you want to learn about being trans? Oh, my God. The bill does not ban that. Okay. And so that's what they've been, been they've been claiming. Well, and maybe not we'll true. make some calls into the Florida legislature. Yeah. I mean, it does. Again, well, we were talking about it being an anti-grooming bill, but it doesn't go nearly far enough to even be called that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, I, I call it the don't say straight bill. Yeah, because the teachers also can't talk to these kids about straight traditional marriage. So I gotta be honest, the biggest pet peeve I have with this whole outrage is that when I was in high school, just like six years ago, if I said gay in any situation, I get detention. They're like, Alex, you can't say gay. <laughs> and I, I tweet gay. And now, you know, congressmen who hate me, they, they find screenshots of my tweets from when I was 14. And I say the word gay and like, he's a homophobe. So you used to get in trouble if you said the word gay. Yeah. And now you see these idiots running through the halls of the school yelling gay and get no pink <laughs> slips, no detention. That's the bone I got to pick with this bill primarily. Um, and it's just I, I grew up I, in the I, wrong I, times. Have you seen the meme where it's all the Disney work, all the stories about Disney workers being arrested for child exploitation? Oh, absolutely. That's uh, there's a great sheriff in that region of Florida named uh uh, Gary Judd, Sheriff Judd, he's phenomenal, and, and I think he busted like 17 Disney workers for wow. like uh, pedophi- uh, pedophilia and trafficking kids. It's a sick. I mean, and also Disney's so outraged about banning sex ed from young kids Preschool? like this. I can guarantee when I have children, they will never watch Disney. What kind of subliminal messaging and and crap do they put in whoa, there? Whoa, whoa, whoa! You don't know the urban legends about Disney and their subliminal. Sex? Oh, yeah. Have you seen that clip from The Lion King? Oh, yeah. Which oh. one is that one? All good girls take off their clothes? No, no. no. So, oh, um, that was Aladdin. So in <laughs> right, Lion that was King, in oh, Lion sex. King, when Simba falls <laughs> down onto the the um, flowers, the pollen flies up into the air and it spells the word sex. And Disney claimed, no, 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 no. It said SFX. Look, we were excited about our new sound effects package. I'm not kidding. What the? Uh, they said yeah. we were excited yeah, about our new sound effects yeah. package. Yeah. So we wrote SFX. I'm sure we can get like a higher sex. depth image yeah. or whatever but that's weird just there's weird. also on the cover of the little mermaid oh yeah on oh, the cover is a large that. it's um cylindrical you know yes. it's mental it's a mental illness that they want to teach their kids these kids about sex and they need to be held accountable for it. and i think desantis should reconsider the bill and make it even tougher out of this mm-hmm. backlash the, and also consider revoking some teaching license from these these teachers who are so uh enraged by it and, and who wants to push their sexuality on these kids yeah perverts yeah. Sick perverts. And the only people who won't stand up against this are either really sick perverts or they're complete cowards because the responsibility of adults is to protect children. And as it happens, we live in a culture where people are so fundamentally either depraved or terrified and completely weak that they would rather allow children to be groomed than be called homophobic or some yeah. other word that everyone's too terrified to be labeled with to actually stand up and protect children against disgusting predators. This one might be... Just, you know, people wishful thinking. I don't know about wishful thinking, but like looking for something and then telling everyone it's true. Yeah. So but let's see what Snopes has to say about this Disney thing. Right. Oh, boy. Oh. 
was a phallus purposefully added to the artwork of the Little Mermaid from 1998. False. Of course not. And you can see it's just a golden tower of various, you know, sizes. And then uh, what, what, do we have it here? Where did it go? There you go. It's just... It's just a golden castle, palace, tower. And everybody I know would always point this out and be like, hey, look Aladdin. what they put on the cover. <laughs> you also have, um, what, what was it? It was Aladdin, right? Uh, when when he was talking to, uh, uh, Aladdin was talking to Jasmine. Do you know this one? It sounds like, yeah, I, I remember I the clip. And then also see. in the rescuers, there was an example. I can't remember if it was the rescuers or the rescuers down under, but as they fly uh, past the series of buildings, there's actually a pornographic image that's placed yes. inside one of the windows. That's yes. on camera for a fraction oh of a God. second, but Whoa. it is there. Here's Snopes again. Did Aladdin ask teenagers to take off their clothes? False. Oh, okay. it's false. Oh, Snopes really? says it. Good teenagers no. take off your clothes. In Aladdin, he whispers it. So let's see. Can we play it? Are we going to get you to down? Can you what was that? They didn't even play it. They did. They still, you have to slow it Oh, he's saying, come, come on, good, good kitty. kitty. <laughs> take off and go. Sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, like, I don't trust Disney. Maybe, maybe the Lion King one is like, they really wanted it to say SFX, nah. but uh, like maybe. Why, well, why weird... even have it say anything? Yeah. Right, I know. Maybe. But but so anyway, I bring up the Disney thing because it makes sense. If like these predators want to go to the to these Disney parks where there's kids everywhere, they're getting yeah. caught. What's fascinating to me is maybe it's just coincidence that Florida says, "Hey, we don't want you talking to kids about this stuff, whether it's straight or gay or otherwise." And then they're like, oh, oh, harumph, I say. How, how dare do you tell us we can't say gay? And then they go around running through the hallways. And then it's like, also, there's a ton of predators down there at Disney. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, is that a coincidence? No. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about this uh, a few shows ago, but Brian Peck was hired to be a consultant on a Disney film after, or on a Disney project, after being found guilty of sexually abusing a child. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. There's some really demented people out there. And, um, the, the outrage to this bill. And I'm glad that you brought that point up about how it doesn't go far enough. And if I know anything about Ron DeSantis is he, he's going to want to make sure it's even tougher. And he's not but, he's not going to cower to this outrage. He's going to, in fact, probably double down. But but maybe, I mean, the challenge is Republicans are consistently reasonable. The Democrats accuse them of being vicious authoritarians. And look what they do. They're like, you can still teach kids about this stuff, just not as a classroom yeah. discussion. And, and no. you know, it's it's like, why are you giving leeway yeah. to... There's to no room to negotiate on this one. Mm -hmm. These are children. Yes. Uh, they shouldn't even be allowed to have these... They, they shouldn't even be allowed to be, have a conversation, period. Mm -hmm. Because this, this whole idea, idea that you can change your agenda, that should not be a conversation that we ever normalize nor accept. And so the idea that some unqualified teacher who's a creep is going to have this conversation with your child... You can't let that happen. And so yeah, but uh, we, we can't be reasonable. No leeway on this. I keep hearing from, from parents who say, I can't speak up because I'd lose my job. And I'm just kind of like, it's kind of scary. It's a kind of scary. It's kind of a scary prospect that uh, you're more concerned about your job than yeah. who your kid is around for eight hours yeah. every day. Yeah. Absolutely. There's All another job out there mm -hmm. and, you, and you, you don't have that many kids. Maybe you do. And this, imagine but, but imagine is, being willing to work for the kind of employer who would fire you because you are against sexual perverts trying to groom your child and you're vocal about that. Yeah. yeah. I think people need to hear you can succeed. I think people need yeah. to hear that there, there, you, you said there are other jobs out there. There was, what's that website for like anti-woke people? Square something. Is that what it was? I don't company know. Company Square or something? Yeah. Square's a payment processing company. Square no, is a payment it's a, it's, it has But there's another, yeah, there's name. another yeah. website you go to and it's like job listings for people who aren't woke. Oh, yeah. Well, God bless them. We, you got to find that out and you got to promote the hell out of them. I'm going to promote them. Uh, I mean, uh, people need to have the courage to, you know, stand up and say this stuff's enough. Well, and, people, yeah. You know, people I remember. Fire. And, and look, I was in high school when, when, uh, gay marriage was legalized or you know the supreme court ruling and i used to i used to be like what's even the uh, the fight about gay marriage like you know the conservatives on their talk radio would be like well if we normalize this what else are we going to be forced to normalize i'm like oh they're just bigots or whatever and then 5 years later 6 years later 
uh, somebody who was a woman for four days gets named uh, Sports Illustrated Woman of the Year, Caitlyn Jenner. And now we're in this next phase of the, the, the transition into normalizing stuff. And but, it's but the, the grooming crap. It's because there's there's no end, right? They say yeah. the ends justify the means, but there is no end. Yeah. Meaning no matter where you are, you're always moving in one direction. The mm. issue is, for me, it's not... It's, it's it's not gay marriage or a slippery slope fall fallacy. I think two consenting adults is not the issue. Obviously, there's a lot of traditional conservatives who have issue with that. Mm -hmm. I disagree. The issue is children who can't consent. That's always been the point. Adults can consent because they're they're you know they can go and do their thing. Children cannot. It's I look at this like. There needs to be a hard line. You, you, I, I don't need to come out and be like, what's next? You know, dogs and cats, you know, living together or whatever. No, no, no. Just be like, yeah, no, I don't care about consenting adults. I care about this hard line. Stop. Done. Have a nice day. Yeah. You know, it, I, I, you, I, you we'll, know who's we'll, phenomenal we'll on, on this? Oh. It's an open secret. That, that Twitter account, I think, is open. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten to know the folks behind that pretty well. And they say we got to stop using the term child porn because porn's a consenting term and children can't consent. It's child it's child rape and torture material. Mm. Uh, and so I, I try not to use the term child porn uh, in my rhetoric because you can't you, when you're a child, you can't consent. Um, and and children can never con consent. We can never normalize that. And so we have to, you're right. You do have to stand up for the kids um, and the parents need to wake the hell up. Uh, and 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 they need to be vocal. They need to be the ones that stop this. So. Yeah, I, I want to make another point here, piggybacking off of what you just said about all of the arguments that were made by conservatives about gay marriage just a few years ago and where we are in relation to those. It's not just the case that basically every prediction made by the Christian right about what would happen in America after gay rights were legalized and gay rights were, were normalized happened. It's that like the most cartoonist, straw man version of their argument that a <laughs> left winger would have come up with 10 years ago has turned out to be what's actually like child happening. drag shows. Yes, exactly. Like child drag shows. And also uh, left wingers like pink news <clears throat> thinking that it is bad press for the Republican Party for them to go out there and go. Did you know that the Republicans are going to try to ban child drag shows if they get elected and, and expecting right. people like, to look at that and go, oh, wow, well, I'd better not vote. For oh, like, no. Yeah. Of it's course, so you're, weird. It just, yeah. yeah. What, it, what a great advertisement. It, it, it's it's just alone, become man. bizarre. And and look, I, I, I still believe that I'm I'm okay with gay marriage personally. Okay, whatever. Um, but but it, it, the the stuff that's come from after it, it it's been it's been messed up. The the trans rights has been such a fat, you know weird issue. And and I think Dave Chappelle uh, kind of lays it out nicely. And he's like, you guys need to disown these other yeah. people. You need to disown well, the is, T you know, plus and the plus. This is the problem. This is the problem. Yeah. There are people like, uh, I think Caitlyn Jenner has been great speaking up in defense of uh, uh, women's sports. People like Blair White, I think are fantastic. There is a scientist, there's a science researcher, a trans woman who's talked about male advantages in sports. I think, you know, look, people want to live their lives the way they want to live. I'm very civil libertarian, libertarian. The issue is there are, there are bad people who are trying to cover up their, 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 what they're doing by hiding within the LGBT community. And the challenge is when you call out these bad people, they will use that and, they, and say, ah, but see, you're attacking trans people. And say, no, 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 that, that is a person preying on, on little girls, going into the yeah. girls' bathroom, taking pictures of them. Yeah. I, I got no issue with yeah. the trans person. I got an issue with, with the people uh, exploiting it, but you'll get banned. Yeah. Uh, you'll, get, you'll get kicked uh, off the but, internet. But I'm glad that people like Blair and Caitlin are, are speaking out against this you know, this crap and we need more, hopefully well, more like them if there are them. Um, but well, th there's just one more thing I want to say here because I, I, I uh, hear what you guys are saying. I don't think we share a perspective here, particularly on gay marriage. I think once a society says that two men can be married and tries to redefine marriage in that way, we've already lost the plot on what gender roles are. And so we're open to any uh, and everything happening with the relationship between men and women that doesn't really correspond to reality and, and what the, the sexes do and how they're designed to relate to one another. That's a long philosophical, moral, and ethical, con yeah. ethical conversation. I think it's a libertarian, like mm -hmm. right now we're seeing like libertarian versus conservative. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about, uh, speaking of, of, of terrible families and abusers, we have a story about Hunter Biden. Oh, you're ready for conspiracy theory, uh, uh, conspiracy theories, huh? That Hunt aren't conspiracy theories anymore because we waited a couple months. Yep. Not even a couple yeah. months, it's been a week. <laughs> yeah. Hunter Biden. Oh, this is, okay. Look at this. That's Hunter Biden name. helped secure funds for U.S. biolab contractor oh, in Ukraine. Oh my gosh. Incredible. <laughs> Russia's assertion that Biden's son Hunter was financing biological laboratories in Ukraine was based on truth. Now, hold on there a minute. Bioweapons, I don't know anything about. 
And that's where the fact checkers keep coming in. Because instead of saying bio labs, which we know exist now because Victoria Newland basically said they do, you say that and the media comes out and says, they talked about bioweapons labs. Like, no, 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 no. I, these are bio threat reduction labs. The US is trying to stop the threat of biological weapons. And I got to be honest, it actually makes sense that the, these programs, the funding, it all makes sense that they're, they're, investi- they're, they're doing research, not on weapons, but they're doing research on pathogens for the sake of being able to identify and, and protect against, considering they're right next to Russia. I think that makes sense. You can look at it more from a m- more malicious or nefarious angle and say, no, I don't trust the U.S. They're probably doing this. Well, we still don't have any evidence. Yeah, I guess the question but, is, what kind of research do we know they're doing there? Is gain of function research occurring? But we don't know. We, we don't we, know we, anything. Right, right, okay. right. Check it out. They say a trove of emails on Hunter Biden's infamous laptop found that he played a role in helping a California defense contractor analyze killer diseases and bioweapons in Ukraine. Now, that is a bold statement. I'm, I'm going to push back a little bit and say, based on what I've read from this, I still don't see bioweapons. But far be it for me to call the New York Post, who is NewsGuard certified, wrong. If they're saying the emails show Hunter Biden did this, and there are other outlets reporting the same thing, then I can only say, I don't know, look, fact checkers, take it up with the New York Post. I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to say, you know what? It must be a conspiracy. It's all fake news. So oh, the New York Post and their conspiracy theories. Why would they go and report that? The funny thing is the New York Post reported about Hunter Biden's laptop. Yeah. What did they say? Russian disinformation. Yep. Then we know. get the biolab story. What does the media say? Russian disinformation. Yep. You give it a week. What do you find? It's all true. And it's, you know, as soon as we first heard that phrase, I joked. Why would we ever believe these people when they call something Russian disinformation? That's what they yeah. call like everything that turns out to be true. And also, why would we believe them when they said anything about a biological uh, weapons lab being fake news? But it's both sides of the political aisle now. It's not just yeah. the Democrats saying Russian dis- disinformation. Uh, for example, just last week, Congressman Dan Crenshaw was on Fox and Friends and Rachel Campos Duffy was kind of pushing him back saying, hey, some Republicans are concerned about, you know, just jumping on the Ukraine, you know, bandwagon and, and giving them everything they want because you know we're worried about pushing russia closer to china whatever crenshaw goes well uh we're not fun you know when they say you're funding neo-nazis that's a lie it's it's totally fake news and then he goes and says the bio labs when you say the bio labs you're playing into putin's hands you're pushing russian disinformation and this is a republican member of congress and obviously this came out two days ago it's been vindicated and he has said nothing these people say nothing they lie and then when they get caught lying they never apologize. They never correct the record. In fact, they double down. And so it's it's dangerous that we're playing with a nuclear power uh, like this. And I don't know, are these people working to protect the Biden family? Are they not wanting this information to actually become uh, the weirdest, public? But the, I don't know. The weirdest thing about this is that we have confirmation from Victoria Newland testifying before the Senate there are biological research facilities in Ukraine or bio labs for short. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, Tulsi Gabbard, Tucker, we're not talking about weapons. Now, truth be told, I haven't heard every single thing Tucker said, but Tulsi, she came out and she's like, I never said weapons. There's bio labs there and we're like, Russia might get them. It's a bad thing. Like what's going on there? We should know. So they always move the word. So after the 2020 election, it went from there's no, there's no voter fraud to there's no widespread voter fraud, right? They always move the word. They always try to change the narrative and they play a narrative game and and they can because they have big tech on their side and they have every mainstream media publication on their side. And so they can move whatever hell word they want just to say that we're wrong. But I just, I'm just, what's confusing to me is that when you wait a week, the story is proven true. So how are there people who still believe this? Like a story breaks, you got to go, I'm going to wait a week. Then you go, oh, that's what happened, huh? Mm-hmm. But there are yeah. people, you know, like like Bill Burr, you know, when, when he was talking to Joe Rogan and said, I just turn the TV on once every two weeks and do what they tell me. Once every two weeks, I turn it on. Yeah. I do yeah. whatever they say. Yeah. Hey, look at that. He's don't like, Joe, you know where, you know, you're not a doctor. You know what he's talking about with masks. Why do you become Fauci? <laughs> uh, it's like, it's like younger Fauci. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about over there? Talk about masks. Yeah. But no, um, I think that maybe I'm being a little optimistic here, but the number of people believing them are fewer and fewer with each passing day. Let's, uh, let's, let's ramp it up. We got the story from the Wall Street Journal. Prosecutors advanced tax probe of Hunter Biden. Grand jury heard witness in February about past drug use spending habits of President's son. Let's talk about Ukraine. Hunter Biden was helping secure funding for this contractor. It was reported by several outlets, uh, notably the Daily Mail, that Hunter Biden and Joe Biden shared bank accounts. This was back, I think, in September they reported this. So here you have Joe Biden, whose son is on the board of an energy company where he doesn't have any experience or speak the language. 
There's concerns about an investigation of the founder of that company, Michael Zlachevsky. And then there's some requests, you know, some emails go to Hunter about like, we got to deal with this. Then Joe Biden flies out and says, if you don't fire the prosecutor, then you're not getting the billion dollar loan guarantee. Sounds an awful lot like a lot to me, like Joe Biden uses his son as a proxy for corrupt dealings in these countries. And you know what? I feel bad for Hunter. We keep ragging on Hunter. Yeah. He's just a fall guy for Biden, right? Yeah. Joe Biden, it seems like he says to his son, you go work the private company. You get the salary. I can set these deals up because I'm the vice president. We'll share bank accounts. You pay my bills and we'll have one guy for all of our taxes. That's what they were, that's what they were doing. It's, yeah. it's been reported, I should yeah. say. The shared bank accounts thing is a unbelievably gigantic red flag to the point where you well, might have don't you still share your bank gun. account with your dad? Yeah, I don't believe it. Or I not. don't know. I don't. No, no, no. But, but well, if look. I was smoking Parmesan cheese, maybe I would have to. Yeah. For for people at this income level, I don't know how they shared a bank account. Yeah. yeah. Because the taxes must have been a nightmare. How would you prove yeah. to the IRS that this purchase is like, oh, well, this one wasn't Joe. This was Hunter. Because you people need to understand, you can't just give people money. You cannot do that. You're a wealthy person making $83,000 a month like like Hunter Biden. He cannot just hand 40 grand to his dad. It's not legal. You'd have to do tax filing for like gift taxes and stuff like that. So that's that that's that's a huge red flag. I mean, I'm just confused by what yeah. their system was to be and, and it's also important to know that it wasn't just Hunter and Bo Biden was also involved in the family corruption really? and nobody really? wants to talk about that because obviously you know he passed away and that's 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 tragic and that's sad um, but Bo Biden ran a foundation and it just came out uh, sorry uh, but it just came out in a, in a, in a new report that uh, uh, he he was in charge of the foundation. They raised like five, four point nine million dollars. Mm-hmm. Only five hundred thousand dollars of that actually went to the operating costs, and the rest of the four point four four point five million went to paying um, you know salaries of board members yeah. and lobbyists and consultants. And so it's a whole family <laughs> corruption. It's it's a disgusting family that's uh, done nothing for our country, but used do, it to get do rich. I, do I really have to clarify that saying I feel bad for Hunter was a joke? No, I mean, look, like pointing out that his dad's corrupt and, 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 Come and on, pushing all this. Like, no, Hunter Biden's a bad guy. To be fair, given the way his dad acts around young children, I am not convinced terrible things didn't happen to Hunter Biden. So I do feel bad for oh, him yeah. on that. Yeah, one, yeah. I mean, and he's also a crackhead. Yeah, we got to keep I that feel, in mind. I feel kind of bad. <laughs> Crackheads Jeez, make bad man. decisions. They sure do. It's true, though. You know, look, look, look. And, and with all due respect to people suffering from addiction who need help, they do make bad decisions, yeah. regardless yes, of whether it. or not you want to have sympathy for him or not. Yeah. Hunter Biden, man, you know, it's really fascinating. You see these people of great power, but they just can't control themselves. Yeah. Epstein. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why they seek power. People who can't control themselves try to control the entire world uh, to compensate yeah. for and it. Unfortunately, I think in politics, uh, I, I talk about this a lot. You know, I wasn't a perfect grade point average student in high school. I, you know, I was a high school student that partook. Yeah, you yelled in, gay in the high school. I, I yelled gay. Yeah. I tweeted gay. I was a I was a rebellious high school Double student. Thousand. But I think a lot of the folks that end up getting into Washington D.C. were the folks that never were really popular in school. Were never, um, you know, they were the, the really great students. They didn't really have a lot of fun. And for the first time in their lives, they get into power. They feel kind of cool. And then they take off, you know, years and years of misery and anger, and then they do bad things with it. And so uh, a lot of sick people up in Washington because of that, I believe. Yeah. Well, Joe Biden was actually uh, very popular uh, in high school. He was a very good football player. It led to him getting the nickname Hands. People called him Hands. I mean, he's, got, he's got that up. nickname. No, do you remember there was this whole story? <laughs> I, th- I think it was like a children's thing, but they, they said that Joe Biden's uh, nickname in high school was Hands because uh, he was so good huh. at football. He was really good at catch- catching them, wow. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I also heard that uh, he was very popular with the kids in the pool and he's got hairy legs. Got I, hairy I've, heard legs. That, I've, I've heard that too. <laughs> Can you believe that story when he was like, I'd be in the pool and the kids would grab my leg hair. It's like, what are you talking yeah. about? 80, 81 million people voted for that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Dude, I, I always tell the story of the, the people I knew who were like posting on social media, like I did my part voting for Joe Biden. Did you? And I'm like, <laughs> oh man, Come if on. only you watched... True and on a shot, but a pressure and bad a calf care. Maybe, maybe, but these people just, they, they just, I don't know where they get their information from. They watch in CNN all day, I guess. Cause CNN doesn't have any ratings. No, they get it from Twitter. 
unfortunately. Most of these yep. people get it from Twitter. Mm-hmm. And, and the way podcasts. It, and, and Twitter recognizes that, and that's why they started to break the game. And they, they promote, you know, it's it's stuff like, remember when COVID happened? And then they had the trending tab and the news tab, and then they created a whole separate COVID-19 tab. They're basically doing the same thing with for Ukraine now, and they're just controlling the narrative. They're banking on people not doing their research. And Twitter has become the, the thought box for almost half the country, if not more now. It's the crazy stuff with Project Veritas, too. Yeah. Overall, like these, these investigations and the spying. It's creepy stuff. It is. But let's uh, let's let's uh, let's do something special. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a story to talk about that involves me and uh, I have to address it. So, uh, good sir, would you like to talk law with us? Sure. We have a we have a lawyer who's we coming do. in right now. That's correct. We got a lawyer. You're going to stick me here? Yeah. Right have there. a seat and, uh, and and introduce yourself. Sure. We have a, a oh, lawyer. What's going who, on with whoa. My camera. Interesting. That was weird. Just give me one second. I'm going to look at that camera. Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. Okay. Oh, wait. His one's, this one's yeah. not working? Yeah, something's wrong with it. Oh, okay. Maybe that, maybe that camera then. Do you want to turn that one on then? Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll just turn on a different camera. Weird. It's uh, uh, the powers that be. You're going to have to come over here. Well, have to Sorry. Over there. Yeah. Yeah. The powers that be are trying to stop us from, uh, from talking about weird. this very, very important Ooh. issue. And hopefully Max the camera's over framed there. properly. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Max Headroom? Yeah. yeah, the camera wasn't working. Uh, hello, good sir. Would you like to grab those headphones and uh, introduce yourself? Sure. So can you, you want to grab the mic? Yeah, right oh. up to the mic. There Gotta we go. go. Right up to the mic. Perfect. It's a. Uh, is it? Is, it's, 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 can you turn the volume up? Yep. Yep. We'll get some sound. There we go. There we go. Now we're good to go. All right. All right. So my name is Jeff Clark, and uh, I'm the former double assistant attorney general in the Trump administration. I had 1,400 lawyers under me at some point, but in in the interest of full disclosure. I am Irish. Oh, so, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you, you have a habit of internalizing people's uh, sorrows and difficulties, so just try to be careful. Yeah. So I'd like to uh, talk to you guys about this story real quick, and then we have a lawyer give us his perspective. Um, Can I just make one point? I want, I want to let the audience know what I referenced earlier. It's from a children's book called Joey, the Story of Joe Biden, where we learned that in high school he was given the nickname Hands because of how good at football he was. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you, like you to take a look at this. is a uh, uh, timcast.bandcamp.com. For those of you that are familiar and those of you who aren't, uh, I released a song November 2nd, 2020 called Will of the People. It's actually part of a series. It's a, it's a universe where we're actually writing a bunch of different uh, songs that go into this artwork. We've got a studio that's going to be producing the artwork. We've got two sequel songs that are in works. We, have, we just released the retro version the beginning of this month. And you can see here our album art shows an orange sky with statues and cables on it and they're being pulled down. In the beginning of this song, we can see right here, what you're seeing right now on the screen, and I'll describe it, is Gears, and this is underground. I'll lower the volume and just play the intro for you. Now what you're seeing is the ground level and the base of a statue as it the song begins to start to show you as it moves up. You then see the cables at the waist of the statue under an orange sky. and more shots of the statue with cables wrapped around it. I then want to show you the end of the song, which is kind of a spoiler alert for those who haven't seen this this production. But at the end of the song, you then see the resolution, which is the ground level brown orange sky cables wrapped around a statue and people are pulling the statue down. But when they do, the statues rotate. So keeping those uh, points in mind, I'll just quickly say I produced a song that is part of a bigger project we're working on. Uh, you know, we've pitched movies. We've talked about graphic novels. We have a whole story arc for the characters in this because we've been we've been trying to build culture and we're we're trying. This is what this is our most successful cultural thing we've produced. We have a story called "Will of the People." It is a song and series we're producing, and it it, it begins with a ground shot, the base of a statue under an orange sky with cables pulling it down. On March 9th, which is also my birthday. Muse posted this video, which I, I'm not going to play for copyright reasons, but I can scroll through. Starts with a ground shot. You see a foot, some point, come in. Then you see the base of the statue pointed up with cables hanging down under an orange sky. And then it zooms out as a hooded figure and people are firing more cables and they then pull the statue down. Now, my initial reaction to the fact that uh, they, Muse launched an album called Will of the People and a song called Will of the People. It was on this show that Ian said to me, he's like, hey, did you know Muse has a new album coming out called Will of the People? And I went, oh, how about that? Because, yeah, it's just a, it's just a title. And Muse being very political, I thought, okay, you know, whatever. 
Then it was last night. We were driving back from, you know, we were just out of town a, a little bit. And I decided to actually take a look because I hadn't actually looked at what Muse was producing. And sure enough, it's it's I, I, the way I would describe this is it's a live action version, shot for shot of the intro uh, uh, and parts of the ending of Will of the People. Now, considering this is a promo, we don't know exactly what Muse is intending to do with the full release. In this video, they're chanting over and over again, the will of the people, the will of the people. And of course, in my song, we say, this is the will of the people, and they're pulling statues down. So it's very similar. Um, I've uh, what, what people need to understand is I've not said anything in terms of uh, legal stuff. I tweeted out, we have questions. But considering we've heavily invested in, uh, we've got, again, I got two songs. You know, I can, I can actually do this. I'm going to do something I shouldn't do because I shouldn't have to reveal this stuff. But I have no problem showing just a little bit of a rough cut. So this is uh, one of the songs that I don't know how to turn off. There we go. That we've been working on because, and we also have another song. It's on my Instagram. So we're, we're absolutely producing in this, and this is an issue for us. So I'm, I'm curious, uh, Mr. Lawyer, what your thoughts are. Well, uh, you know, look, you know, I, I had done uh, copyright work for uh, General Motors at one point about uh, the computer code in their cars. Um, and attempts by uh, the state of California to uh, to grab that. So, you know, look, uh, in terms of the basic elements of, of copyright law, I mean, it looks to me like uh, there's a lot of similarity here. And, uh, you know, it'd be interesting if you could uh, uncover evidence of whether there was actual, you know, intent to copy. Uh, but it, it looks like it's been, you know, some key elements have been copied. And then the, the, the issue is, you know, is there originality in your work? I think it's very original. I think particularly, you know, compliments to you, the turning statue. That was inspired by artwork from a Polish artist. But okay. we, we created our own version of it. We animated it and we made it part of a bigger story. Okay. So, so this, this, this is, there's, a, there's a lot to break down, especially. Uh, some people have said, I, I tweeted this out and I said, we have questions. Big fan Matt Bellamy would love to chat because mm -hmm. I, 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 need, I need questions answered, right? Um, a lot of people said, the idea of the statues being pulled down, you don't own. And I said, right. And they said, the, sta the idea of an orange sky, you don't own. Uh -huh. They said, the phrase, will of the people, you don't own. I said, okay. And then I said, the name, the ground shot followed by the base shot of a statue under an orange sky with ropes pulling down the statues is pretty much a live action remake of what we made. Right. Well, look, I mean, it seems to me that uh, that's the kind of defense argument you would face, right? But it's an attempt to atomize your work. If you look at it, if you take a step back and you look at how you've combined the elements, right, it's combinatorial, it looks like it's very similar. And if I were you, I'd be pretty concerned about, uh, you know, Muse, uh, you know, coming out with something like that right after you've done it. So and there may be evidence that, that you know, they saw your work. And uh, that would be very troubling if I uh, were looking at that, Tim. Considering that uh, Matt Bellamy has praised Alex Jones in the past. Uh, there's a, there's, uh, for, for maybe I'm wrong. I just want to make sure I can put that out there, but there have been numerous, uh, uh, statements. And I listened to an interview purportedly of the lead singer of Muse telling Alex Jones, Alex Jones inspired his music. Their songs use a lot of themes of anti-establishment, anti-government. So a lot of people like them, though I don't know where they exactly stand on the political spectrum. It stands to reason that, uh, uh they likely have access and have definitely seen the work we've done and, and produced considering the guests we have on the show overlap with a lot of what, what they talk about. So, you know, so I, I've seen them, uh, you know, uh, I know that uh, they have a connection to the Alex Jones show. I have some used songs on my iPhone right behind me. Um, so, you know, I, I, I know kind of where they draw their themes from and I can see why you're asking these questions. If I made a, wrote a book, you can't copyright book titles, right? Uh, not quite sure of that off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. There's a lot of people who responded to my post on Instagram and my Twitter when I said we have questions. I didn't say mm -hmm. anything beyond that. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't threaten any. I didn't say, claim anything. But a lot of people immediately said, Muse didn't steal your work. And like, I didn't even say that. A lot of people didn't realize, though, that they took the name as well as the color scheme, the, the symbols. I mean, we have the character in the hood raising his fist and, another, and, then, and then like it's a whole pulling the mask up. 
So obviously there's a lot of things that exist in, in, in reality that you can't individually claim. But, um, you know, my response is like, what if I wrote a, a book called um, Star Battles about space ninjas with plasma swords that fought the Imperials? Sounds right. awesome. Would, would I get sued? <laughs> would I get sued for that if I made that book? Yeah, I think you would because, you know, everyone would recognize it as connected to, to Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, the combination of those elements, right, those creative elements is what makes it, you know, a particular work. And, you know, I, I think you'd have, you know, an interesting claim, uh, you know, more than colorable, it seems to me that, uh, you know, that's infringement of a set of combined ideas that you put together. And if I didn't sort of spell out the atomization point, right, if you just, you know, take a very narrow slice of some creative work, you can always find that there's some similarity to something else, right? That can't be the analysis. You have to take a sort of gestalt and take a step back from it and look at it in order to assess that kind of issue. So everybody, uh, we're, we're a decently large company in terms of revenue, mm -hmm. um, not in terms of employees, but uh, we're expanding. We've got multiple properties. We're building a new headquarters. We have lawyers. We have several because this is what you have to do when you're working in entertainment and content. And so the first thing we have to do as we're working these projects is just like send it to the lawyer. And the immediate response we got from one friends who are, who are lawyers and our lawyers was, whoa. Now, here's the crazy part. They published it on my birthday. Now, obviously, a lot of people, the first reaction I get was like, everybody basically said to me, I say everybody has a small handful of lawyers. They're like, you know, if someone came out and said, this guy made a similar work to me and put out on my birthday, they'd be like, well, you know, look, there's 365 days in the year. It's like they're eventually going to hit it. But when it's the same name, then it's like, well, you know, I guess yeah. it's well, okay. But then it's the same colors, the same theme, similar characters, same story, same name. And on my birthday, yo, it kind of sounds like they did it on purpose. Well, if you uh, take a, a number of uh, probabilistic events, right, and you start looking at what's the probability of those all happening in conjunction with each other, right? You multiply uh, them together and the fraction gets smaller and smaller, right? I mean, these kinds of things you know, those sorts of arguments are, are launched in, you know, all kinds of litigation, but, you know, especially in the criminal law, right? You know, what, so maybe, you know, there's a one in 10 chance that a particular fiber, you know, was left at, at the scene of a crime, right? But then if you accumulate it with a piece of evidence about, you know, the, the ethnicity of the person, and then you have some DNA evidence, like DNA evidence doesn't necessarily rule out everybody, right? But you multiply all those things together, you get to an astronomical number, then you start to s you scratch your head and say, you know, it looks like uh, the odds that it's not this person are very low. And mm -hmm. so in this kind of analysis, it would be with all these coincidental elements of the work all occurring at once, seems uh, like Not you're, it's right for you to be asking questions. But it doesn't seem like a coincidence. Well, so let, me, let me say this. To everybody who's listening live, comment, do you think this was coincidental or intentional? And I want to ask you guys what you think. Based on what you've seen and, you know. Well, I want to get at, uh, ahead of everybody else in saying this. I think that we've found out who the muse of muse is. Yes. And ah, it's yes, Tim yes. Pool. You exactly. are their muse. And, and so uh, I think... Jeff's assessment that there's something there uh, is pretty accurate. Would, would, Jeff, would you, when when you look at this, just personally as a lawyer, does it look like intentional to you? Like it was intentional? You know, I, I think as a lawyer, part of my training is to be cautious, Tim. And so, you know, that, that I wouldn't uh, jump out on right now. But I will say that, you know, like putting those two things side by side, they look pretty damn similar. And there's some other... And they're named the same thing. Yeah, they're named the same thing. I mean... You know, uh, you know, where there's uh, uh, smoke, there may be fire. And so it's right for you to be pushing this and raising your questions. And the fact that there's a year and a half, like, distance between the two projects coming out. Uh, like, uh, when, you, when you first posted about it, I thought you just posted it, like, created this video, like, the other day. I didn't realize it was out for a year and a half. Like, yeah. they've had plenty of time to watch it, like, review it. And be like, oh, and we've got 1.2 million views on our song. Yeah. It's, it's it, you know, it's, it was on, definitely it's on seen. Spotify, it's on iTunes, it's on Bandcamp. Uh the first, the, the first uh, Tim Cast IRL performance of this was June 19th, 2020. So even well before we published the video of it, I was playing acoustic and singing live. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, what, what I have to consider is there's, there's a difference between me as an individual business owner and what a, a corporation with multiple owners would be dealing with. There's pros and there's cons to being a, a partner in a big corporation. 
let's say you own a company with like four other people, shareholders. You've got 20%, someone's got seven, someone's got 30 or whatever. If some problem happens and you want to stand your ground and say, I will not allow this person to come at me, you've got to consider your other partners. You got to be like, who's our investors? Somebody invested money in our company. If, if I go to battle and I lose, I'm losing their money. So you may be risk averse. One of the benefits, however, is you get a problem like this and you can say, we have an obligation to each other and it's not about what we want to do, it's about what we have to do. So if, uh, if, I had multi if I had investors in this company, which I don't, then I would have no choice but to immediately launch, fire everything and be like, we cannot, I can't be responsible to investors. But as an individual, as someone who's a fan of Muse, I think about, look, we've got a lot of money invested in this project we're working on. It is, it is too similar. Already when you search for Will of the People, it's displaced us. But it's not just the name. It's that it's the, literally the description of what my song is. Their description is the same as my description for the most part. Their, their visual depiction and story is the same. If you were going to explain to someone what my music video was, it was interchangeable between the two of them. How am I supposed to carry forward with this, this massive investment to building culture when Muse, a year and a half after me, has published what I view as a shot for shot remake? of at least so far the intro with the same name of my song. And so the question is, it's, it's you know, I'm a fan of the band. I can play most of their songs, you know, but, but this, is a, this, is, this is a threat to my business mm -hmm. and, to the, and to the mission that we have. I don't have investors to worry about, but I'm wondering what people think I should do in a situation like this. Should we say we can't, should, should we say like already Muse making an announcement has generated because because they're a large and famous international band. Already it's generated so much press that's an uphill battle for us. Or do I say we are one of the biggest podcasts in the world with 60 million view, uh, listeners every month and we have to push back and make sure we assert our copyrights and the project we've invested all this money in. We've been investing in this project longer than they have. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Yeah. You know, well, look, let's just look at this, you know, from, uh, you know, just for the sake of argument, right? Like arguendo, let's suppose that they deliberately uh, copyrighted it, right? Um, you know, that the they may have made some kind of calculation that, you know, based on looking at some statistics online, uh, that, uh, you know, they, they can get away with this, right? And so if I were an individual creator, right, I'm not uh, a person gifted with a lot of you know, musical uh, or, you know, visual artistic skills. I'm, I'm a guy who lives in the world of analysis and, and writing and presenting arguments to courts. Um, but, you know, I respect your talent a lot. Um, as I said, I'm a fan of Muse too. I have, you know, their songs on my iPhone. But, you know, I, I would be insulted if I were someone who poured my creative energy into something and I saw that it was, you know, blatantly being hijacked. Let I mean, me that's ask you, very, let me, let me, that's, that, would, that would hurt me personally. Let me ask you a basic copyright question. Um, you know, a company like Warner, they're going to do a basic, like, search for IP and copyright if they're launching a product, right? Yeah, I mean, they're going to do any company that, that engages in anything, especially if it involves a significant investment, is going to do due diligence to see you know, like what's out there, who, who, who could come after us. Um, we did yeah. when we launched this. So you know, you, we, we, we are careful to make sure that when we're launching it, I, we do basic searches. We look up song. We, we don't find anything. We're like, okay, we're good. You know, because right. if we're going to, if we're going to put tens of thousands of dollars into marketing even. Right. Yeah. You don't want to take chances with it because it obviously is possible sometimes that there could be some coincidental overlap. You don't want to be blindsided by that when you're down the road in, in the business venture that flows from the creative act. You know, uh, I would think that that uh, big, you know, company behind Muse would do that kind of work. Um, and, you know, look, it also doesn't. Let, so let's say there was, again, for just for purposes of argument, imagine that there was some deliberate activity here. It doesn't even look like they tried to to uh, make tweaks to things to to be able to improve their position. Right. They didn't change the color scheme. You know, the title's the same. Uh, you know, the, the birthday the, thing, the, I think that, that would make me wonder whether I was being trolled, but I don't right. think that's the kind of thing that, you know, that could be pure coincidence. But just all of these things yeah. together. All and, but things but together. look, like both, both uh, videos start with a ground shot. There's a slightly different, the, sh the shoe steps in, right. but then it shows, the, you know, the, the base of the statue. Theirs is pointed upwards, mine's at the base. The, the ropes are already hanging from their statue. The ropes are already hanging from mine. Orange sky, right. people are pulling on it. And then uh, that's the cold open and the reveal at the end is they're pulling the statue down and it's rotating. Right. So look, we have no choice 
but to ask these questions and pursue it and, and have these conversations, especially there's a lot of people need to understand about, you know, why we would do a segment on the show about this. And it's because there are certain legal questions about your ability to assert your position when you're a public figure. Uh, long story short is if I don't exercise my rights to try and assert my copyright, it could be bad for me. And considering we've got two songs nearing completion and we're, we're reaching out, we're, we're, we're storyboarding the next, we've already finished storyboarding the next series on this. I have to be like, hey, this is an issue for us and we're taking it very, very seriously. And we're going to be, you know, we need to have a conversation with Warner and Muse. So Warner and Muse, you need to be talking to us. We have to. Otherwise, I don't, I, I, it has to be done. So with that being said, um, comment, let me know what you guys think. I'm not saying I know exactly what the best path forward is for anybody, for me or Muse or otherwise. I'm just saying whether you agree or not, most people say there are similarities. There's confusion. There's an issue. And ours existed first. And we've already put more money into this. So questions need to be asked. But let's, let's, we'll move on from this because I think we talked about it as much as we can. And let's talk about the, uh, the Academy Awards. I think that uh, um, Will Smith smacking Chris Rock was staged. Really? What do you guys think? I don't know. Yeah, I have no clue. I almost don't care. <laughs> you almost don't care. I, I don't care. I, I don't care at all uh, about you know that event that took place. But I think it's important to talk about uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. And you know, Mike Cernovich has been on top of this, talking about how uh, you know it, it's probably taken a toll on Will the fact that you know he allows his wife to sleep with other men, mm -hmm. and then you know he's totally okay with that. But a joke. Uh, he, he he gets upset by, and so Will's probably not all there right now uh, from a mental health standpoint. And so even I, I could see how it wouldn't be staged. I could see how uh, maybe he just had enough and he had a snap. Someone did super chat us saying, "Trust me, it wasn't staged." Hmm. And the way Chris Rock reacted, there's two things. One suggests it was staged. One that it wasn't. After he got hit, you could tell that he didn't know what to do. And he was like in a difficult position where he was like, eh, uh, and they yeah. said, we're giving away documentaries, Oscars, because he's clearly flushed. He got yeah. smacked in the face. However, when Will Smith cranks up to hit him, Chris Rock doesn't put his hands up, which is a common reflex when you're about to be hit. Yeah. In fact, he does a, maybe it was an accident, but he makes a move that is common in fight choreography where he moves with the hand swing. Yeah. So when someone is fake slapping you, what you do is when the hand is coming in, you move with it. So it's it's a glancing hit and less impact to your face. Well, their yeah. ratings have been in the tank for the last yeah. few years yeah. and nobody talks about them anymore. And now everybody's talking about it today. There's been great memes created already. It's a great meme template. Will Smith is a, a you know, he's I'm, I'm very grateful for his work in giving us good meme templates over the years. Um, his movies have been lackluster to say the least as of late. Um, but he gives us great meme templates and so there's a lot you can do with the slap <laughs> well, motion. It's true. Well, Cuck was trending on yeah. Twitter all day. Yeah. Really? Because Very Jada Pinkett Smith mm, apparently sad. is allowed to be with anybody she wants. Yeah. Very I got to read Mike Very Cernovich's sad. tweet. It was the best tweet I saw on this whole uh, situation. <laughs> Mike's been on fire for this. He's always on fire. He, he tweeted, being a cuck just went out of style. Everyone saw a broken man trying to save face. Don't be smacking cheeks when you letting other men clapping cheeks. Wow. Poetic by wow. Cerno. <laughs> and it's almost 10,000 likes on that one. Oh, man. Um, Twitter but, doesn't let me so, pull this stuff up anymore. Yeah. But. So, so look, you know, I, I, I didn't study Hollywood fakery in uh, law school, so I don't pretend to be an expert. But, you know, I would say as a as a lay person, I, I don't I don't buy this. I think it's about as real as, you know, wardrobe <laughs> malfunctions mm. right uh, in the past. Uh, you know, and and look there, you know, Hollywood is uh, expert in uh, staging things. Right. That's what they do for a living. Yeah. And and so and that's why the cops didn't come you know, out. Look, and I, I'm a I'm a fan of uh, Will Smith. He's a fellow Philadelphian. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, I you know, I, I, I think that the whole thing smells and it and and it's the kind of thing you launch when you're in an uh, award show that no one wants to watch anymore. Yeah, it's possible. It was real. Yeah. Like, you know, you can think about the LAPD said, you know, Chris Rock's not not going to file. So that's it. My response is the police don't need the victim to file. If yeah. the police have evidence enough to convict, they can go on whether or not you, you as a victim want them to. So it could just be it's all one big happy family. And they're like, we don't want cops arresting Will Smith. Mm -hmm. 
just let it go. And they all say, let it go. And that's what happens when you're powerful, wealthy elites. You can walk up to a man and smack him in the face for your wife's honor. And you're not going to spend it. You're not, you're going to go party afterwards and get drunk. Yeah. I personally thought, uh, the clip of Amy Schumer and her, her fellow idiots singing Uh. gay on the stage was, uh, (laughs) I didn't watch it. uh, uh, (laughs) You got, you got to pull that one out. You literally have Amy Schumer and two people I've never seen or heard of before in my entire life singing, you know, uh, protesting Ron DeSantis's bill saying gay, 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 It's just gay. so weird that Hollywood would be protesting like the most milk toast uh, attempt at an anti-grooming bill. Strange. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. but I mean. Roman Polanski is yep. spirit. Yeah. Yep. You're you're just jealous again. Going back to your detention slip. Days. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm seriously pissed like, about where that. Where was one. Amy Schumer when I got yeah. sent to the princess? That's office. exactly right. That's exactly right. Hollywood's dead, man. Yeah, they well, had uh, 10 million total viewers on the Oscars last year. Brutal. And that was down like 60 percent from the year before. Yeah, we did a cartoon about that. If you guys want to check it out, it's called the Wokest Oscars on Freedom Tins. I'm not sure if it was staged. I said I almost don't care. I guess maybe some small part of me does a little bit just because I very much dislike Hollywood and they do something ridiculous and I want to say uh, darn Hollywood. But whether it was faked or not, it's clear that this has had the effect of people ridiculing a specific person at the Oscars rather than the entire ceremony as a whole. Because for the past couple of years, it's been how unbelievably stupid is this ridiculous padding of oneself on the back ceremony that occurs where they give awards to their friends for doing things that they sit there and pretend uh, is important while the rest of us don't really care. Seamus? Yeah. I would like to award you our oh first, my gosh. Our first oh my annual oh, Casty. Tim, I just, oh my God. There you go. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. So I want to say that we have always been ahead of the curve on Tim Cast. All right, he wants us laughing. Telling ordinary Amer- <laughs> <laughs> in telling ordinary Americans that they're wrong and need to be more like us. Thank you for this award. Uh, yo, legit, I think I'm going to buy a bunch of those little alpacas. Yeah, give them so out as awards. Yeah, I think I should go pick some up. Seamus didn't say he stands with Ukraine in his speech. So. Oh my gosh! Whoa. Give yeah. it back. We're gonna give, it, give it back. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna cancel Seamus. He gave it back. It's mine again. Oh. Because I think it is the default stance to stand for Ukraine. That's right. I'm sorry if, that you don't agree. Safe. If we did like an award, <laughs> turn it around on him. <laughs> Doesn't if, need to be said. Exactly. If, it goes if, without saying. If we did like an award ceremony called the truthies or something and we use little alpacas yes do you think you think james o'keefe would mind that'd be so good james is great so this is what if, uh, you, what if it was an award ceremony for like most contrived speech and we just went to different podcasters and awarded them based on who gave a really contrived speech at some point in their podcast and then they have to give a contrived speech while they're up on stage receiving it i mean who who would be better for that Sounds great. Isn't that the whole point of the award show? Someone goes on stage, gives a contrived speech. A lot of people get mad at it. It boosts ratings and people pay attention. Wouldn't Nobody... it make more sense to just cut out the nonsense and give people awards simply for making contrived nonsensical it, it, speeches? It, it, it is yes. a crazy thought when you realize that nobody watches the Oscars. These yeah. great cultural moments, mm-hmm. losing significance, and now we just don't care anymore. We're talking about it now because some dude smacked another dude. Mm-hmm. But whether it was staged or not, that's the only thing they have that makes us talk about it. Yeah. I didn't... Do, you, do, you know, do you know what movie Will Smith was in? Uh, no, no, yeah, no, no idea. Do, 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 does anybody know? I, I know what movie he was in. With a C? No, I know. No, do you guys not know? No, no idea. Oh, King yeah, Richard. No. Yeah, King oh, I'm Richard. sorry, you're yeah. up to date on these things, Tim. No, but my <laughs> point is, my, 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 yes, it is. <laughs> but my point is, people don't even know what movie Will Smith was in when he was there, and all they know is that on TV some guy smacked another guy. Mm-hmm. That's all the Oscars is these days. Yeah, but the, you know, the, back to the uh, I'm becoming probability guy. Uh, you know, back to the combining probabilities, right? The fact that uh, the show is failing and the only thing that makes anyone talk about it is this incident, to me, suggests that the incident is artificial. Mm. Right. Makes sense. It's fake news. It's all fake news. But uh, people need to understand, too, that that stage doesn't mean anybody other than Will Smith and Chris Rock knew about it. It could even be that that Chris Rock didn't know about right. it, but Will Smith's people told him this would be really good for publicity. For yeah, he's for, we you know we what? heard he's going to tell a joke, go up there and smash. Is he going to get like an alopecia, like an anti alopecia contract? I, I don't know. We're talking about him, are first, we? It's his first Oscar, it's isn't it? Are. It's the first Will one he's Smith? ever won. I don't know. That is I it? don't know. Also, what was the joke even? G G I Jane? Like, why is that a bad joke? Because Jada Pinkett Smith has alopecia, so her hair's falling out, so she shaved her head. So he was like, "I look forward to G I Jane too." And Will Smith laughed. And then Jada Pinkett Smith's face she like... glared at him. 
And then she looks at him and then he gets up. <laughs> uh-huh. And then, you know, Chris Rock says something like, oh, it, hey, Richard, or whatever. And then Will Smith slaps him. I thought it was fake. I thought it was fake because the cops didn't come. I thought it was fake because Celebrity. Chris Rock didn't do anything. That's the weirdest thing to me. I, I don't know. If I was on stage and someone walked up to me, the first thing I would do is be like, I'd put my hand up and be like, back off. What are you doing? Yeah, like, why I don't, are you walking up to me like this? I don't know, though, man, because if, if we were going to fake a fight, and that was our whole thing, and you were supposed to come up and smack me, I wouldn't be like, yes, I'm going to take the role of the guy who stands there in front of the entire world and doesn't fight back after he got smacked in the face. It just seems like a really weird thing to agree to. I saw all these comments. Will Smith de defending his wife's honor. <laughs> and uh, who defends their wife's honor with a sl like an open hand slap? That's not I got to be honest. I think it's good that we're talking about it. Do Why? you? Yeah, because I'd rather people of low... Um, What's the right? What's the what's the polite way to say this? Of low cognitive, of limited cognitive faculties. I would prefer it if they weren't coming out and arguing politics and voting for Biden. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the way I put it is, when I was younger, I was like, I wish more people were involved in politics. Why don't they pay attention? <laughs> all they care about is sports and celebrities. Then 2020 happens, and all people cared about was politics, but they didn't know anything about it. And so they're like, um, I just feel like we're in a car. You know, we're in we're in a bus, and everyone's like, we can drive off the cliff or just turn around and I'm like I vote to turn around and they're like off the cliff off I'm like no no everybody look at the rabbit look out the window look at the <laughs> rabbit stop mm -hmm. if people want to pay attention to politics and they're passionate about it then by all means we can have disagreements for whoever we want but if regular people are going like yo he smacked that guy I'd rather have them be more interested in that than going out and voting on things they don't know about and aren't interested in yeah. you don't got to be smart to vote I'm not saying that I'm saying if you don't care about it and you're only going out and voting because it's pop culture, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Let's have everybody go watch sports and pop culture somewhere else. And anybody of any intellect or, you know, whatever, you're allowed to vote so long as you want to and you're choosing to take that first step. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, you're saying it consumes their attention span, uh, you know, budget. Mm -hmm. And I guess yeah. I got to thank Will and Chris because they were able to shift the news cycle away from Ukraine for a mm -hmm. very short moment. Hey. And well, so... I just, now we're back. I just wonder if Will Smith has some Irish in his blood. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's a great point. That, 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 that must be. Yeah. All right, let's go to yeah, Super Chats. If you haven't already, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends if you like it, and head over to TimCast.com. We're going to have a members-only segment coming up at about 11 p.m. on the website. And as a member, you're helping keep all of this work going. You're helping us expand and build that cultural content I've been talking about. We, uh, I, just wanna, I wanna stress the, the importance of cultural content. The Daily Wire is doing the same thing because complaining about stuff on the internet only goes so far. Mm -hmm. Making artwork content that shows your values and inspires young people and will live on, that's important. Inspiring someone who's young as to like, why should you have these values? Here's why, here's what we believe in. Just saying it isn't enough, you gotta show and that's why cultural stuff is so important. So with your support, we'll do more. Smash that like button. Let's read some of these super chats. We got random user who says, send Will Smith to smack Putin. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something someone at the Oscars speech would say. That's a thought. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like something Lindsey Graham would say on Twitter. That's yeah. true. <laughs> right. Man Overboard Media says, can next year's Oscars be hosted by Jerry Springer and Steve Wilkos? Yes. Amazing. Trip Sucks says, out of all the voices that Seamus can do, he chooses a Tucker Carlson impression for his regular, <laughs> normal, everyday voice. Do I sound like Tucker? What oh, do no. you really sound like? Here's like... <laughs> Here's my actual voice, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. The media wants you to think that I sound like Tucker Carlson. I don't, actually. <laughs> Ridiculous. I've never said anything that sounded even remotely like Tucker Carlson. So why do they want you to think otherwise? That's the question you need to ask. <laughs> he adds those little things afterwards, like, you know. Yeah, it's that's like the one or two. Little, yeah, exactly. Instead of just making a declarative statement, he then adds, you know. Why don't you think about it? Well, you we got me. the. And they should. And they should. Yeah. We got the Irish brogue from you uh, tonight, yeah, too. Thank you so much for the Irish brogue back <laughs> there. It, was, uh, it comes out to me every now and again because I internalize other people's <laughs> suffering oh, so day. often. White Paper Cat says, you're working on a video game. Cool. And uh, yes, we are. We've had a bit of a, a functioning like alpha. And then we have uh, right now a... We've, we, we retooled it and refined it. But right now, the latest version is awesome. I think so. Yeah. I, I I won't say too much, but um, you can you collect. It's it's a it's sort of a roguelike. I think it's a roguelike game. Mm -hmm. It's easy way to describe it. It's a top. It's it's a a platformer descending roguelike where you are battling your way and collecting new items. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's good stuff in the works. I think 
I don't know if we ever said the name publicly or anything, though. No, I, I don't want to give too much away about it. We've been working on this for over a year, and it's sort of gone through. Than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we've gone. There have been a couple of iterations, but it looks like it's finally getting to the final stage with, like, the actual code that we're going to end up using in the thing. So yeah. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be I really mean, we're, cool. We're really getting close. There's, there's definitely uh, more. That's like there's more work to be done, but I think we finally have the the basis completely finished. We're not working yeah. on a rough draft at this point. Right now, it's now it's a matter of artwork, and mm -hmm. I think the only thing we really need at this point is like we want to make a ridiculously massive inventory system. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm talking like weekly updates with new items. Yeah, and it's it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Well, and and uh, Tim, how cool is it to be at a show where you got you know D one hundreds on the D one hundred for? Uh, I got a D one twenty. Thank Ian for that. D one twenty. That's heavy too. Yeah, the D one hundred won't stop rolling after you roll it. <laughs> Just yeah, knocking it everything away. over. There you go. It's going to destroy you the whole table. You got a fourteen. <laughs> fourteen. All that for fourteen. Yeah, pretty crappy. <laughs> oh well. All right. Trudan on a shot of pressure says, I'm a professional actor and have been a professional fight director. That slap was a stage slap. Note Will Smith hitting his chest to make a sound. Did he really? Got no. to pull that up. Did he do that? He did the... Do you want to pull it up? Um, yeah, I can pull it up on my laptop. I, I heard that slap and I thought it sounded weird. I'd heard someone say that he stomped his foot. Come on, you're telling me really? Hollywood couldn't come up with better special effects than that if they were to fake <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, really. I agree. He did Not, all... Yeah, but Yeah, but look. If, if it was staged between just the two people and no one else, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. Thomas Sidebottom says, the only reason the media can get away with saying what he actually meant was is because Biden literally can't defend against it. Also, I mean, they, they do it all the time to people who can defend against it. They just know what you were thinking every time you say something. It's really, it's a it's very impressive power they have. Seriously, JK says, I know I'm a random internet guy, but I have a very close inside Hollywood source with direct connection to two of them Nothing was staged, trust me or not, but this person is super legit. But could it be that Will Smith walked up to Chris Rock yesterday and whispered, I'm going to slap you, do a joke, okay? Don't tell anybody. Could it, could it have been that staged? And so obviously their family and friends were like, wow, that was real. Huh. I don't Maybe. Care. Let's see. Bat Barrick Bulldog says, no, Ian, we peeing. Oh. Ian is currently on vacation. <laughs> Tim, let me send you the link. I, I don't know. I can't pull it up on Oh, you. you're not able yeah, to pull yeah, it up on yeah. there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have All right. I don't know. I don't Jacqueline know. Pierce says, Shimcast, please <laughs> shout out Joseph's nine, ninth birthday because he's a huge Shimcast fan and loves, oh, loves Freedom Team sweet. so much. Thank you. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, Joseph is also an incredible name. Happy birthday, young lad. <laughs> Vosh says, Zelensky threw up the white flag. He's giving up the Donbass. If only Russia would have told us that was their intent, we could have negotiated for peace instead of arming people they consider terrorists. Is that happening? That's the latest? He's giving up? He's going to give in? Does that, Putin, does that make Putin stop? Don't know. It's not going to work. Yeah. Should, 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 I, I, you know that joke I sent you about uh, uh, the USA Today article? Mm -hmm. Should we say that or we should, did Wait. you want to use it? Let's use it. Let, okay. let's, let's think about it. Also, someone someone shouted out the cartoon we collaborated on. They, oh, they wait, seemed to think it was Which very, one? very good. I think it was up there a little bit. He uh, complimented your, your Fauci performance. Oh, there you go. Excellent. Harry Toe says, the Freedom Tunes episode, Fauci starving for attention, is the funniest thing I've seen this year. When Fauci Tim starts singing the Eminem song, I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> I'm very proud of that. Yeah, that was a great moment. And if you guys are interested, if you watch the cartoon and laugh, if you donate on Patreon, you'll actually be able to see Tim and I recording it. And some of it was actually improv. The The final product is a bit different from the script. And oh, we came up yeah. with some really funny stuff. While wait, we so were we here. actually recorded when I had that epiphany. Yes. I was like, I stopped and I was like, Seamus. You're like, wait a minute. I've got it. And I'm you were like, what? What do you got? And I was like, Stand. I was like, that's a horrible idea. We're not doing it. <laughs> Fauci singing Stan or Trump is. Trump, Trump. Well, yeah. Trump sings the, the Dido part. And yeah. then. Uh, <laughs> She's got good I would drink. You guys got to check it out. Right. Okay. I'm going to check it out. Yes, Group B it. says, in response to earlier video, Brookings mislabeled you as Tim Pool Daily Show when everyone knows it's Timcast. Also about Biolabs, how do we know? How do we know that they don't data back from the Soviet Union era? Have data? I don't know, but I will say the Tim Pool Daily Show is a podcast. I put up two podcasts. Timcast IRL is conversational and Tim Pool Daily Show is monologue. So uh, if you didn't know that, because Timcast IRL on podcast platforms has way more viewers. It's got like triple the audience. Uh, so on you, I have two YouTube channels, which are like me monologuing. And then that becomes one podcast on iTunes and Spotify called Tim Pool Daily Show. That's what Brookings was was referencing. 
They basically took me saying there are no bioweapons labs and people are wrong and then made an article saying Tim Pool pushes lies that there are biolabs. Congratulations. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant fake news. All right. What do we got here? Awesome. Archivist says, Tim, I have a prediction based upon my analysis of the Ukrainian war. I believe if the UN and NATO do not help rebuild Ukraine for fear of further Russian aggression, the World Economic Forum will for, uh, will for, pub for good public press. Interesting. Perhaps. Valorn says, see, we English told you you can't trust the Irish, but you didn't listen, and now you have one doing this. Come on. Don't feed him whiskey after midnight. <laughs> First of all, you think Gremlins. he's awake after midnight? Come on. No way. Yeah, we have to limit Seamus after the show because we, sure. we wrap up around 11, and then Seamus is always going for the whiskey. And That's extremely like, offensive. It's like, not true. It's for it. It's true. Totally Only true. when it's not Lent. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. All right. Ice Fox says, any advice for how to research your reps? People like me who work long hours and no skill in research trying to figure out our reps' claims versus actual beliefs. I just moved to NC and I'm trying to figure out my reps' choices so I can vote uh, vote right coming up. Uh, go talk to them. Look at their Twitter. Look at their Twitter. Yeah. Talk to them. And you can go to Ballotpedia and look up uh, a yeah. lot of information about them. This is the best thing you can do. It's hard to know exactly. How you, can, can you trust them, you know? Look at their record, I guess. But it is tough to be, you know, there, seriously. There are some uh, rating services that, you know, look at yeah. people's voting records. You could find that on the net, too. Greg Duvier says, Seamus, why do you still use Patreon? That's a good question. So we're actually working on building a paywall on my website right now. So we can use that instead. But it's still under construction. Uh, so I, I switched to Subscribestar for a little while. But unfortunately, even though everyone tells you they want you to use something besides Patreon, when you create something different, you just don't pull in as much through donations. Yeah. And it got to the point where we were literally going to have to stop making the cartoons because we weren't generating enough revenue to continue. So I just had to go back to Patreon for the time being. Get that website. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, we're getting closer. It's it's built. So basically what we're going to be doing is launching um, a paywall. The normal Freedom Tunes videos, the weekly uploads are going to stay free, but we're also working on extra content for people who donate. And, uh, and a little bit, I don't want to give an exact date right now, but once we have a solid enough content of library to have a bit of wiggle room, we're going to launch the official website where people will be able to donate for exclusive content. So we're right. working on it now, and uh, I'm pretty excited for that. All right. Hans Gruber. Oh, Hans, Hans Gruber. Huh? <laughs> he says, when billionaires sell massive amounts of stocks to pay taxes on unrealized gains, the market will crash. Good point. That's true. It absolutely yeah, will. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they're going to have to sell off their shares. You're going to crash the market. But as I also mentioned, what you are doing is you are essentially saying if someone is doing such a good job at running their company that the value of their stock increases, they should sacrifice control over their company to people who have potentially never been involved with the business before. That's insane. Crazy. Yeah. All right. Winston Alexander says, with an unrealized tax, the government will have to federalize appraisers, local tax assessors, and insurance adjusters. Yeah, otherwise, how do you actually determine the value of something? Mm -hmm. Crazy, man. BD Pershing says, this hits people who own crypto hard because you don't earn any money on crypto till it's sold. So all these multimillionaires due to crypto are going to get hit hard. There are legit yeah. people who are worth $100 million because of crypto. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're going to try and stop these people from becoming wealthy off of crypto. But isn't, man, just think about how crazy that is. That you're, you are some libertarian trying to buy drugs on the internet in 20, 2010, <laughs> and now you're worth $500 million. <laughs> crazy. Oh, good for them. Yo, yo, you think I'm kidding. Like, like, yeah. That's what happened to a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> man. Sequoia says unrealized gains tax un, unrealized gains tax force forces asset sell offs across all vectors huge financial crisis fed has perfect rationale to buy these assets currently prohibited they have ownership stake control of every company equals great reset crazy man yeah or they like seize your assets because you couldn't afford your tax bill so they just take your stuff from you without you selling it you know a bunch of people were arguing over smashing the like button Button the smash like, like oh. the smash button, wow. smash the like button. I think people were saying slap the like button earlier in the show. Ah, slap it. Yes. So Smush. It might have been where it started. Smush. Smush. Slap. Rakin, uh, does it say Rakin or Raylan? Wealth tax is already here. It's called property taxes. My yep. house assessment went up 20%. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, uh, property ownership is how people transfer wealth to their to their kids. Mm -hmm. So they're absolutely taxing your wealth. They just want to do more. It, it's to prevent ordinary people from becoming wealthy. Because one argument that the left will always make about systemic racism and redlining is that property ownership is the quickest way to build up wealth and either enter the middle class or upper class, and black people are excluded from that. But they're fine making it more difficult for literally everyone in the country to amass wealth that way even though they have acknowledged that it can keep a group of people down and will keep groups of people down. Well, it's what you were saying, Tim, earlier about, you know, structural dynamism. If all these rules basically lock people, uh, you know, lock the world into a stasis where the rich stay rich mm -hmm. and other people can't climb the ladder, then, you know, there's no challenge to that economic power structure. And it's just not the kind of system that we should want to have. You know, we need to have uh, strong respect for the rule of law and for constitutional law, but we also need, you know, an Adam Smithian kind of economic system. Otherwise, you know, uh, you get power monopolies either on governmental power or on private power, or these days the combination of private and and uh, and public uh, power all in one. All right. Wes Candle says, even if they did get the idea from you, they'd have to steal actual frames of your footage for you to have a claim. Blade Runner used that color palette with statues and star battles surely exist. Well, how, how would you? One, one more time on that one. That one went by too fast. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. yeah. Wes Candle says, even if they did get the idea from you, they'd have to steal the actual frames of your footage for you to have a claim. Blade, no. Blade Runner used the color palette with statues and star battles surely exists. Uh, no, I don't. I don't agree with that. I think that uh, you know, it's a. It, like I said, it's a kind of overarching analysis that looks all of the, at all of the elements together and you know I don't think you have to copy particular frames in order to have a case stock says wait 10 days and we'll know if it's intentional or coincidence what what, what would you recommend in terms of something like this should you just wait until they publish something that may be infringing or do you uh, well, I mean, you know, it looks to me like you should raise these questions now because you also don't want to wind up in a spot where you sleep on your rights. Right. Uh, That's what people need to understand. Yeah. I see, you know, people are commenting like Tim thinks he's all this and all that. It's like, dude, you have a bunch of lawyers when it comes to criminal or civil. They tell you if you don't exercise your rights, you can't defend them later on. Mm -hmm. So let me just warn all of you guys. If you come to this property because we've had the issue. You will you will be charged with a felony. I'm not I'm not I'm not exaggerating. The feds have already been here because of what's been going on, and there are people who think it's a game. So I'm just letting you guys know, we our hands are tied on all of this stuff, because as a big company with a bunch of employees, if someone comes and does something, we have to exercise fullest extent legality, uh, the full the full to the fullest extent the legalities, because if there is someone who does a thing that in some way infringes or violates any of our rights and we don't exercise it, we lose claim to it in the future. So with this song, our immediate reaction was we have to exercise all options. Right. And in terms of your physical safety, right, you know, with your employees, you owe them, you know, certain duties. And, you know, you need to make sure that you, uh, you know, don't just sleep on your creative rights, but, the, you know, you, you protect uh, the physical safety of everyone who's part of your enterprise. You know what's sad is... Uh, as, as, as our company grows, not a day goes by where I'm not saying to, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not you know, uh, I'm not wondering myself or, or realizing this is exactly why all corporations do the things they do. Because certain laws exist, uh, regulations exist. And it's really fascinating when I learned you couldn't give people money. That was kind of shocking to me. I was like, wow, you can't give people money. You can't. Up to $15,000, you can give someone money. But you can't like, you can't like buy your mama house. So you, you just can't do it. There's ways you can support your family for sure, but uh, there's like, you can't hire people unreasonable at unreasonable rates. You can get investigated. People seem to think that um, if you have money, you can do whatever you want. It's like, man, certainly it is good to have money. No joke, life is comfortable, but there are a bunch of rules that come into place. If I want to be able to make music and make money off it, if I want to be able to do this show and make money off it, all of a sudden there's crazy rigid legal rules we have to follow. When something comes out, that people are saying looks like it's a copy, we're like, okay, we have to exercise our rights. Absolutely 100%. Otherwise, we could we, we risk you know, losing them uh, in other places. So that's why, this is, this is why, and I'll let you guys know, this is why I'm talking about it publicly on this show instead of just going to our lawyers and being like, fire away. I was like, no, 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 we should talk about it. Let everybody know what's happening and how, how we feel about it because we want to be able to produce content and not be crushed by massive conglomerates like Warner or something like that. 
That means we do it this way. Um, and, you know, some people say it's, it's, you know, I've been advised maybe we should just file something and, and not talk about it. But I'm like, I'd rather let people know, you know, what's going on and uh, be transparent to the best of our abilities. But at the same time, assert we will be exercising our rights. Um, I'm wondering if in 10 days it's coming out, the song or something. I don't know. I know the album's released in August. All right. Wes Candle says, so following up, he says, I've worked on tons of music videos and they were clearly referencing Blade Runner. I like you, Tim, but no one in this industry is passing around your music video for reference. You know, I, I, I disagree, especially with people saying, I think they were saying Matt Bellamy was on Alex Jones a year ago or something like it that. It was multiple years ago. I thought it was back in 2006. Yeah. That he said that he was inspired by Jones to uh, uh, make Uprising. Yeah, I thought he was on Jones. In yeah, talking about Alex Jones's documentaries and yeah, stuff. It's been a while. So, if this is a guy who's familiar with this space and he's in politics and he pays attention to anti-establishment voices, yeah, I think it's incredibly likely. Plus, the video's got 1.2 million views. It's not like it's it's not like it's got no views, you know. All right, Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, "Stand your ground, your effing Tim Pool." I mean, look. I, 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 here, here's what I want to say, too, about the, the, the people getting charged uh, for coming here. That sucks. I, I, I never wanted to be in a position where it's like a castle, like a literal one with like fortified walls. And then you realize you have no choice, literally, yep. legally, criminally, civilly. We, yep. we, we have no choice. If someone yep. steps foot on the property, the first thing that happens is the police come down and that person's getting charged. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll just make sure it's clear. There's big no trespassing signs. You walk past that, it's a misdemeanor. There's a physical barrier. You walk around it or past it, it's a felony. I'm not kidding. And and that's all I can say. You know, let people people need to understand that. And we do have uh we will I'll leave it there because it's it's a tough circumstance. I always wanted to be like accessible. We wanted to do events. We wanted to be like in the future we're going to have events that will be members only and then it'll, it'll be semi private. People started abusing our kindness. People started doing crazy stuff. And the sad thing is when you're getting 60 million, you know, we, we, we were getting like 100 million views during the election. It's crazy, crazy numbers. It takes only one out of 100 million to right. be crazy to come here and ruin everything for everybody and, and hurt somebody. So, all right, let's grab some more. Lex Evelino says, Seamus, fellow God-fearing brother here, building in the <laughs> blockchain gaming space. Would love to hear more about your game and see if we can add some value. Shot you a tweet. I'm in Virginia, too. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can have a conversation. I'm not sure if you're interested in other stuff with the code. I've basically just been voc focusing on like story and art. I wouldn't know anything about the kind of code that goes into it or, or anything that might be associated with the blockchain. But if you want to reach out to, to Tim and his people, if, if they're willing to talk, that'd be pretty cool. And we, also, God bless you. And I'm, I'm glad that we have uh, other God-fearing folks out there. We do need uh, we, we do need a blockchain stuff. So, oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Great. Spidge B says, if you don't defend your copyrights and trademarks, you may as well not have them. Mm -hmm. Having a reputation for playing aggressively will dissuade other interlopers. Maybe mediate, but uh, but theirs can't coexist. It's it, like, it, property rights, right? <laughs> you know, uh, good fences make good neighbors. Yeah. And so, you know, it, that's one reason why it's important to make sure that property rights aren't invaded by the government, uh, which is happening with increasing frequency. And it's also a reason if you're the holder of a property right, even an intellectual property right, that you, you make sure that you're aggressive about protecting it. Jerome Morrow says you have to aggressively enforce your copyright. If you don't, not only will you lose your right to do so in the future, but you'll also be showing the authoritarian woke left an effective attack vector to sabotage your future cultural works that counter their influence. Yep, that's basically it. You know, Pew Pew Trucker says you're looking at the Muse song the wrong way. It's a tribute cover. They just want to stand with their idols. Certainly uh, one way uh, a lot of people have said uh, uh, imitation is the, is the greatest form of flattery. That's true. But like if we have been working on these vocals and like the, I've been screaming into these microphones, writing songs, we've been flying out musicians, some prominent uh, musicians we've had on one of the songs, uh, uh, actually on both of them. It's the drum. It's the former drummer from The Offspring. So we're not like we're, this is very serious. We're we're actually negotiating with major labels on this stuff for like guest vocalists and singers. I shouldn't have to be publicly announcing our plans to launch this stuff because of what Muse is 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 doing. Um, regardless of whether or not anyone think, thinks it's intentional, if it's someone just, if someone does a cover song, right? You know, a cover version of a song. That's, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, right? But if they're taking an original idea you have, 
especially when it's in the kind of launch phase and ripping it off, that's theft. Man, times are tough. We wanted, we, uh, we have a huge backstory for the universe and the characters of uh, Tales from the Inverted World. I think I've even talked about it on the show. The, the dictator, his name is The Wolf. There's posters saying, send the pigs to the wolves. The little boy under the bed is ha holding a, a stuffed wolf. Uh, uh, this, this story, the character's arc is his parents are executed by the dictator that they were calling the pigs, you know, Cochina or whatever. And the, the last thing this, this kid had from his parents was a stuffed wolf toy. So as he grew up, he, he grew up, he always carried it around with him, had it in his backpack. And so he, he gained the nickname, the wolf, which was actually a term of endearment because his friends knew what it meant. He was this revolutionary. But when he, when he grows up and becomes the leader of this authoritarian regime, the wolf becomes pejorative. Like we have a whole universe mapped out for this project. And we were like, we wanted a comic. We're talking about movies. No joke. O almost two months ago, discussions on, on feature film. It's frustrating that it comes to this and I have to now be like, hey, look, here's what we're planning on doing. I hope everybody knows. But uh, that's the reality of it, I suppose. So we'll see where it ends up. All right, let's grab a couple more Super Chats. Jason Bellick says, I work for the guy who sued Lil Nas X for copyright. You need an expert on the music industry. I can hook you up. Uh, I appreciate it. We actually have a couple. And it's really interesting. Like, we've already had some conversations. Obviously, like I said, our company has lawyers that deal with this stuff because... You know, we distribute a very large podcast. All right. Rye, Ryan Merce with a mouth says, there is a video labeled as the leaked song from Muse and the chord structure is identical to your song, but it's not actually a Muse song. It's a song by Oliver Light called Revenge. Well, I've, I've not heard that. My, my, my concern right now is with their Will of the People promo that shows like a live action shot for shot remake. So... All right. Leon's Law says, why are these idiot lawyers advising Tim to do lol suits? What's a lol suit? Like uh, a, a frivolous. Is it LOL? Yeah. Okay. F frivolous, laughable suits that won't go anywhere. Uh, I don't think that I've advised you to file a suit. That would be point number one. Doesn't I don't think he's listening very carefully. Right. And I don't second, think I've even said filing a lawsuit. Yeah, no, you did what happens either. when you argue with a lawyer over the super chat. It's like, <laughs> I never said if you notice. <laughs> If you return to 10 minutes uh, and 36 seconds into the podcast, you will know what I said. <laughs> well, see, people don't... I think you want to... Let's replay the transcript. Yeah. On yeah. People don't understand that uh, legal remedies don't necessarily mean lawsuits. Like, it, it could literally be like, when I say, you know, taking action, it could be like, we write a letter. Yeah. Like, hey, we, can we get on the phone real quick? Yeah. And well, just... you know, I heard you say that you wanted to raise questions. And yeah. I also heard you say that when you said you wanted to raise questions, people immediately hopped to the conclusion of, you know, uh, uh, well, they didn't steal it from you, which is right. kind of almost like a consciousness of guilt or the lady doth protest too much. Right. Um, so, well, that, that was the funny thing, because some people interpreted that as everybody knows I'm a fan of Muse. And they were like, no, he said he like he, he said he wants to chat with him. He wants to get him on the show. Some people said that. Some people just immediately went, whoa, what? And a bunch of people responded saying, dude, they didn't steal your work, calm down. And like, I literally said nothing. Right. So projection, yeah. what, you know, it's a point I was making before. That when you say something like that, it says more about what your thought process saw already without being prompted. So that was the lol projection. Yep, yep. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, I love the support of your audience, go IRL team. You know, I, I thought about this. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of Muse. I can play, you know, a, a bunch of their songs. It's been a while. I forgot some of them, but I can, I covered, a, you know, I could play a bunch of their songs. Uh, I've been a fan of them since I was like a teenager, but that, whether I'm a fan of them or not is, is immaterial to what's happening now. If some people, if, if they were like, you inspired them or whatever, I'd be like, if they did see it and they were like, you know, we, we were inspired by it. I would have appreciated a conversation, mm -hmm. but but I got I got to say all of that's immaterial. The question is, we have to cons we have to consider our rights. We have to always pursue protecting our rights as a corporation. We we don't even have a choice in the matter. It's not like you can't ignore these things. So people need to understand that it's not often it's not personal. Sometimes it's personal. Sometimes people file lawsuits because they're just mean people. But this is not personal. I'm a fan of Muse, but I'm not going to back down from this project we're working on and the culture we're trying to build. And I've been a musician since I was seven years old. I obviously care about my work. Just because Muse is a massive, you know, stadium selling out band doesn't mean I'm going to ignore the fact that there's an issue. We'll see what happens. But uh, now you guys heard it from me before anybody else.
because I didn't want this to come out like a press story or something and then have people be like, whoa, what's going on? But that being said, my friends, smash the like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. Head over to TimCast.com. We're going to start recording that members-only podcast for you guys, which will be up around 11 or so p.m. You can follow me at TimCast IRL. You can follow me. Uh, you can follow the show at TimCast IRL. Follow me personally at TimCast. And you can check out Will of the People on YouTube, which has been up since November 2nd. Watch the video. It's a, it's a short film. I think most of you will really appreciate it if you like the politics of this show. And we have uh, on my Instagram some some demos of like the, the, the new next songs that are coming out. Um, on the, on the YouTube, on youtube.com slash cast castle, we actually show part of the production process with like the songs we're working on. Some of these are rough cuts and they don't sound all that good. Just keep that in mind. And, uh, the songs are going to get mastered and they're going to be top quality, really, really good stuff. So appreciate it. Uh, Alex, you want to shout anything out? Yeah, I'm going to get yelled at if I don't do that. So I have a book coming out. Uh, it's published by Post Hill Press. It comes out April 26th. It's called Winning the Social Media War, How Conservatives Can Fight Back, Reclaim the Narrative, and Turn the Tides Against the Left. And we talk about a lot of the stuff that we talked about tonight, uh, including the mass formation psychosis that takes place online, uh, the censorship, Hunter Biden's laptop plays a key role in uh, the rigging of the election. And so we, uh, uh, we lay that out in there very nicely. We interviewed uh, dozens of leading conservatives, including Donald Trump. Trump Jr., Charlie Kirk, um, even politicians like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Senator Rick Scott was gracious enough to give us some time. And so it's an awesome book. Uh, some say it's the greatest book of all time, uh, just past the Bible uh, and the art of the deal. And so um, unbiasedly, I agree with them. Uh, so winning the social media awards and Barnes and Noble, uh, Amazon, uh, all the major booksellers. Seamus Coughlin, you fight like, no, 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 you, I'm, I'm not going to mess with the lawyer, all right? You go ahead and have your spot. Maybe I'll have to consider suing you, Seamus. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He didn't say he was going to sue me. He said he was going to consider suing me for everyone <laughs> listening right. at home. Very good. <laughs> exactly. Real, real quick, real quick. Someone said in Super Chats, you guys should call your games division Tim Tendo. Ha ha. Defend yourself fiercely. <laughs> Could we do that? Uh, Shim Tendo. Actually. No, 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 no. This is a legitimate question. If if we if we formed a company called Tim Tendo for our video games, I'm not advising you to theoretically. <laughs> I, I I think I'd have to analyze that question very carefully, Tim. Good lawyer response. Yes. <laughs> I kind of feel like I wouldn't get away with it, especially if we got big. Nintendo would be like, get out of here. You you might get a threatening letter at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can sue a ham sandwich. It doesn't mean you're going to win. Yeah. That's right. So one thing people need to realize, too, is if someone's got the resources and they're just like, I don't like what you're doing, I'll bury you. They can just throw money at you. And I mean, you the go January away. 6th committee is doing that to, you know, to, to everybody that ever stood by President Trump right now. They're doing that exact same thing. There's nothing that they can be investigating that's actually legitimate. And so their goal is to financially harm anybody. I'm $90,000 deep in legal fees already. Wow. Um, Insane. And all I had to do is tell them to F off. I used the my second favorite F word, Fifth Amendment, 102 <laughs> times in 46 minutes. I wanted to use my first favorite F word, uh, which I'm not going to say because I'm a classy gentleman right now. Um, but, I mean, they're doing just evil things to evil people. I know my friend uh, Jeff's also been looped into what they're doing too, but you made a great point. You can sue anybody for anything. You can yep. make anybody, uh, you know, go through the trouble of getting attorneys just, just for the hell of it. And yep. it's a dangerous tactic. It's like poker. Mm -hmm. If you've got the weight, you can pressure somebody and even force them to back down. Even big corporations, mm -hmm. they'll often just be like, I'll pay you what you want. Go away. You know? Yeah. And, and that's what most people that have been subpoenaed by the January 6th committee have, have done. They've, they've kind of taken the subpoena and they're like, oh my gosh, I want to do what I can. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, take everything because I just can't afford it. And, Kind of similarly to you, I think a lot of people pick on you because they don't understand how, how, how big you are, right? You have 60 million viewers. It's a substantial revenue stream. I mean, we were just rated the 25th fastest growing company uh, in the southeastern United States for private companies. And most people go to our website. I'm like, oh, my God, they have, an, they have a Wix website from 2018, which we do. We just never really cared about our website. And and so I'm going to stand up to this commission and tell them to F off because they're dangerous and they they picked the wrong, I said they picked the wrong fight. And so now if you guys can find the January 6th committee's phone number, call them and ask them to uh, drag me in for the public show trials because I'd love uh, for them to do that. It'd be a lot of fun because uh, I could use some at least free publicity with the tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees I've spent. Yeah. Right on. Wow. Well, um, I have a YouTube channel called Freedom Tunes. We make cartoons. We release one cartoon every week, sometimes two a week. Uh, we got one shouted out in the comment section here. It's a video Tim and I did about Dr. Fauci. He's very sad that he's not getting the attention anymore. So won't you go over to Freedom Tunes and watch the cartoons we just uploaded with him 
in them. It would really mean a lot to him. And also, we did a cartoon on the Oscars from last year. Uh, I was I was very happy. I, th- I think it's a funny cartoon. So if you guys want to check that one out as well, I think you'd enjoy it. And I wanted to say that your too, microphone's off. Oh, my microphone's off. Yep, your microphone's off. Oh, there we go. Oh, I am there. There we go. I <sighs> muted myself. I just wanted to be quiet. I just want to say that our guest Jeff is uh, was a former assistant attorney general for the Environment and Natural Resource Division under Trump. I realized that we didn't fully introduce him. He's also a lawyer, which is why we were looking for his expertise this evening. Thank you, Jeff, for pitching in. Appreciate that. Thank you very and much. I also wanted to say um, we mentioned a website that was for um, looking for non woke jobs. That site is down. Unwoke.hr is gone. They got hacked. They were wow. off the air in like a day, which is really kind of annoying. But there's another site called redballoon.work. It's very small, but on it you can go and find like freedom oriented employers, people who are looking for maybe unvaccinated employees, which is kind of interesting to me. Anyway, that was just what I found over the course of the show. You guys may follow me on Twitter and minds.com at Sour Patch Lids. I also have sourpatchlids.me where you can go to find all my socials if you're interested. Right. Can, I, can I make a quick oh, two yeah, plugs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two. So uh, please follow me on Twitter at uh, Jeff Clark US. And uh, also in light of the, uh, the issues that uh, Alex was talking about, I have a legal defense fund actually uh, you know, in terms of the numbers that are being mounted up for my personal legal bills at givesendgo.com slash Jeff Clark. I'd Very appreciate good. any help. Right on. Awesome. We will see everybody over at timcast.com in that member segment. Sign up, support our work, and we'll see y'all there. Bye, guys.